Welcome to Hardly Initiated. It is your host, Tyshawn Jackson, here again with another episode with my co-host Ryan Ketchins. I'm ready for this one, man. It's game time, right? Game time. You ready? Game you ready? time, <laughs> game day, and it is Wednesday night. You already know we are live here. The channel is going viral right now. I'm not sure if y'all check this out. I mean, I'm going to drop this on y'all. Y'all need to watch this episode right now, but Judge Lynn, we dropped the powerful, probably yes. one of the best interviews mm. to date and uh extremely vulnerable i'll be honest it gets you one of those little yeah yeah it gets you real tight you yeah. might have to put it down let it breathe and then bring it back so please make sure y'all watch that episode i would imagine that episode is going to take over the internet within a matter of a few days yes yeah and then this one right here is next because on this episode we are rocking with my personal my favorite certified relationship coach let me tell you this brother here has now been on the platform this is his third time making his way a hardly initiated when we got you coming back here listen that says something special about you we in here rocking with my main man my guy we in here rocking with king canyon welcome to the live show baby oh my pleasure man i'm glad to be back with y'all hey look, yo, yo i just gotta ask you a question though oh man. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> What's up? with that judge lynn interview did you cry nah nah i didn't cry i didn't cry i didn't cry but and it was crazy because I, I did the chapters i make sure i did the chapters for yeah, it and yeah. as i'm watching it tarshawn knew i could not start talking about it i'm like oh this she, is so she's good. amazing she's Bruh, she's off the chain man. she is like amazing and then to have experienced what she's experienced and just dude i i just wow for you guys to get her man y'all y'all some real y'all y'all dudes let me tell you something and i want and see before we even transition into this show to end that conversation Y'all, the reason I think it was so special hearing a woman grieve her husband, it was, it was hard, it was painful, but it was, it was, be it was, <clears throat> it was beauty in that. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, can it, the goal is to death do us part. Like death the goal is to make it to the end of, of a lifetime. Ho hopefully for all of us, oh, right? I don't even want to, I don't even want to, okay. I'm sorry. I hate to ruin that moment. Kids, you can't already. I'm trying to have a special moment with the people. Kid already. Come on, I, man. I, I got, but I got to tell the truth, though. You know, that's why you have me here. Okay. Well, you like me because I tell the truth, even if it's unpopular. So, what, so why is that? Why is the people's goal not till death do us part? What is their goal? What do so you think? It I is? think um, since we're starting there, I, I think people's goal is emotional fulfillment. And I think we live in a society that uh, temporary emotional fulfillment, because the truth is, if you would ask Judge Lynn, and I, I haven't seen that second interview, mm -hmm. that love is about, it's, it's about commitment. Mm. You know, it's not about how you feel at any given moment, because at any given moment, you might feel differently. You mm. might feel like, I don't even like my wife, or I don't, but, but I'm committed. See, I always tell people love is, is the act of committing to someone. Mm. Okay, and that part of it, everybody, ain't, they're not willing to do. They're only willing to commit to someone when they feel in love. Mm. Don't let me get started on this shit. I'm, I said, hold on, hold on, hold on <laughs> kid. Yeah. We're not gonna get you all the way started yet. Yeah. Because, because listen, it's some people that's joining the live for the first time. I'm so excited y'all joining us. We got somebody from Jamaica. We got we listen. <laughs> so, we got somebody live from East Tennessee. We got somebody from Baton Rouge. They say Ken is the man. Oh, they say Ken is a man. Real okay. quick, though, real quick before we get into it, Ken, because Ken is about to thank go you, crazy. Thank you very much. Whoever I would say that. our favorite relationship expert, because you typically bring depth and principle yeah. to our ratchet yeah. conversations. So, so yeah. we'll take this and out a couple real quick. cuss words too. Yeah, yeah, a couple cuss words. Just I'm few, not cussing tonight. I'm, a, I'm not. I, I've already cur cursed as much as I'm. Well, uh, maybe I will a couple times. <laughs> right, right. We got <laughs> Tampa. Like, we got Vegas. Mm -hmm. We got Dallas. We got Massachusetts. Guys, listen. You know, might be some single people out there, some single ladies and some single men. So go ahead and drop that ASL. I'm a little, you know, I'm 35. Mm. Am I? Am I 35? I might be 34. I think I'm 34, 35. One of those, Damn. right? Yeah, get a little older. But AOL, <laughs> you have to drop your ASL. A H S X L location. Mm. So go ahead and drop your ASLs in the chat real mm. quick. But listen, I want to give a shout out first and foremost. We're working on the pictures, we're working on the production to kind of bring all this cool stuff to you guys. But I want to go ahead and give a shout out. Let me pull this up to our newest members. These are people who joined really within the last three, four days. So shout out yeah. to Monica Oliver, Deanna Baker, Lisa McKinnis, Raphael Hicks, Nzinga Grant, Nikki Blue, Shay West, Lydia Weir, Tilo Green, and Milky Way. Welcome to the family. Welcome to the family. But it's official. 
It's been one month. Today marks the 30th day since we launched the membership. So I got some good news and I got some unfortunate news. Mm. So I'm going to start with the unfortunate news today. Yeah, what's that? We didn't hit our 100 member goal. Mm. I'm very upset about that. We only reached 95 members. Okay. Just 95 members. So five members away. Let's go ahead and make that up right now. So I'm getting ready to drop the link. So let's go ahead and get those five members right now because literally mm. today is the 30th day. So we can still hit the goal. And I want to go ahead and give a shout out. I wish I can pull this up to all of our members who've been with us. They got that little light blue badge. Yeah. They yeah. got the new badge. So if you if you just joined us, you got the blue joint. But if you've been with us for at least 30 days, you got that light blue joint. That's that sexy Harley initiated badge. So I want to give a shout out to <laughs> Wally Moore, Noel Byer, Cindy. Cindy be going in on me, low keto. Gina Smith, Clarity Speaks, Jasmina, Sinam Sinan Begovic. Gonna, gonna butcher my damn that was tough. Come on, Jasmina now. S and Sheila <laughs> McKee. We going crazy. So shout out to y'all. And I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Tyshawn. I got some more announcements in a second, but I'm going to just let it breathe first. Let it breathe, man, because tonight we're going to be talking about, ladies, listen, we got some special for y'all and the fellas too, if this is y'all, because we in like a very weird place right now in the space of love. People really don't want to love. People don't know how to love. People not even open to love. So tonight you're going to figure out why you can't love. That's what we're going to be talking about today. And we got King Canyon on here to help us figure this out out all right because we got a lot of ladies right now i'm talking about we give listen our members the founding members especially we hopping on the phone with these people we talking to them yeah we, we we on the we in the like in the chat with these folks getting to know them and many of the stories are exactly the same ken everybody wants it but for some reason they just not open to it and i, I want to know this just to start here just to have some kind of starting point in the conversation okay. Why do some women struggle, would you say, struggle to find love despite their efforts? Just give me that. Why, why do you see women struggling to find love despite their best efforts? Mm. So let me answer that question. So that's I really, see your eyes pop open when I nah, said that. because the, the question is loaded. Yeah, it and is. I, it is it loaded because we're not linear people. We're, we're, people are complex. And let me explain why. There are a multitude of reasons why people can't find love. But I would suggest if I, would, if I were to go and begin looking <laughs> at just a, a couple of reasons, and let's just start with women, okay? Let's do that. Then we can do men, but start with women. Yeah. One of the reasons is we are crippled by our past. And so the past cripples us. And in, in other words, um, we look at our present and possible future through the lens of our past. Mm. And so everything that we do is predicated on, okay, based on the past. And so I, it's kind of like you, we consult the past to determine what we should do in the future. Now I understand there's wisdom that we should have wisdom. Okay. This happened to me before I get it. But many times we are deep. Debilitated. We are by our past. Okay, the guy. So we don't understand that we have an anxious attachment style, right? Mm. And so what happens if he don't call, if Tyshawn don't call me in 15 minutes, well, he's out there cheating. Well, that's based on what I saw in the past. That's one reason. The other reason is, is now people don't know how, and this is what I teach people. People do not know how to date. They don't know how to date. That's people, people don't know how to date because what we, what they think dating men is, and women, men and women, they okay. don't know how to date. See, when you understand what the purpose of dating is, the purpose of dating is not to feel good. The person, the purpose of dating is not to have sex, is not to go out to dinner, <laughs> is not to do all of, all of those things are byproducts of dating. Mm. Okay. Now, what dating is and should be is should be about collecting data. Okay. Now think about this. The truth of the matter is most of us don't know how to collect data. And what am I collecting data? To see who is in alignment with me. Okay. If you don't ever collect, and what we do is, is because we just focus on connection, connection, connection. Ooh, how does he make me feel? Ooh, how does he, ooh, he love bombed me. Ooh, he talked about, ooh, hey, beautiful. And then you get caught up by that. And six months later, after you done had sex in the back of the car, you done did everything, you done gave him your whole heart, you realize he's not the guy I thought he was mm. because you didn't know how to collect data. 
Mm. Collecting data is a way, and what I teach my people is, and we can get into this tonight, but let me tell you something. I created a methodology. Think about this, y'all. Okay. I'm going to blow y'all away with this. Let me Blow me away, damn it. Here's the thing. There are two types of questions people ask. There are two types of parts of your brain. You have your conscious mind and your subconscious mind, okay? Your conscious mind is responsible for your logical thought, your, your prevalent thought. I'm going to the store, okay? Yeah. I, I have a dream to have a big podcast like you. Conscious thoughts. But that is not what really guides you. Hmm. What really guides you is your subconscious thoughts. Your subconscious mind controls 95% of your reality. Hmm. Let me prove it to you. Have you ever been driving somewhere? You're driving, and you don't know how to, you got that. You think about the podcast. You think about how we can get more followers. But you're driving, and you know, turn right here. Turn left here. And you ended up in the parking lot right out there, right? <laughs> all the time. Right. Autopilot. Because uh, your subconscious mind is where all of your experiences are. It's where all of your, your, your emotions, your belief system, everything about you. Think of it like a computer, right? Think of it like a filing system with a computer on top of it. And so your subconscious mind is where your true being lies. And so what I teach people is you try to date people asking conscious questions like, where do you work? How many kids do you have? Where'd you go to school? Bullshit, sub I mean, conscious questions. Yeah. But the true person is in the subconscious. Your beliefs, Tyshawn, what you believe about life. So when I teach people to ask them, okay, Tell me two things you learned from your father and how it has affected you today. Mm. Now, the answer to that question is in your subconscious programming. Yeah. And you can, it's not at the top of your mind. You can't lie about it. So now, and then I want to ask you, I said, this, this is another thing I'm going to ask you. Do something for me, Ryan. Describe your perfect day. What would that look like? Mm. What well, a subconscious. See, I created a book, Just Ask, where I wrote 250 subconscious questions. So now once I begin asking that, you all of a sudden, I understand who you are in your subconscious. Not the bullshit fake stuff you do, mm -hmm. but that's why that, your past, and the last thing I would say is the trauma you've been through and you've not healed. You want to know something else I think about this? Now that you, I'm reflecting as you, 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 you telling this story, I've really never dated a woman that's consistently asked me very in-depth questions, yeah. right? especially on that level. I haven't. Those are scenario-based too, which is like a really good company would do that. They right. would ask you because they want to figure out how you think and how you actually process things. And I would imagine if you ask those, those kind of questions to a dude that's unsuspecting, if it's a whack dude or dude you probably shouldn't be dating, he's not even going to know how to respond to those questions. Exactly. Yeah. So here's the thing. What the guy says, because some of the women that I that I teach, they say, well, he don't think I'm interrogating him. I said, no, you think you're interrogating him. Mm. I said, the truth is, if you ask a man that, he's going to think you're interesting. Facts. He's going to think I you're would intriguing. Be, I would be so enthralled in that yeah, conversation. Yeah, he, yeah, he's going to yeah, think yeah. there's depth to you. <laughs> yep. Yes. And I said. And feel challenged, too. Right. In a healthy way. Yeah. And I said, well, what you have to do is get past your thoughts. And so those three things are the reason why people cannot, what can I, your past, you don't, you don't get, know how to consciously or subconsciously get to know someone. And then the trauma you've experienced, you still need healing. I noticed you said something too, and I, and I want to just touch on this for the audience just to get a good idea on this, because I think this is important. Mm -hmm. And I, you mentioned it and I think it was assumed people knew, but you said that somebody that may have had a bad experience because they may have an anxious attachment style mm -hmm. they might be always thinking that somebody else is doing something to mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. or they might be on edge mm -hmm. based upon a previous experience or trauma that they've had in another relationship but when you talk about an anxious attachment style what exactly is that in particular so we can get some context so an anxious attachment style normally ch stems from um, a person's childhood and what an anxious attachment style is it might be the child whose mom uh, went to work all the time. Daddy wasn't in the home and the child had separation, maybe anxiety, or they had abandonment <laughs> issues, right? Where they felt like the person was going to leave them. And so they're always waiting for the person to come back and they need to know that the person is going to come back to them. 
It's like when you leave uh, a dog at home and they just going crazy. They go, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I wouldn't say the dog. Oh, that's, that, that's messed up. That's not a bad example. I but wouldn't say. Now I ain't say that. But but and then what happens is now it may not be that they left you. It may not be that they abandoned you. It may be that you felt abandoned because there was some separation between you and whoever it was, your caregiver, mother, father. And so what happens to people is they grew up with this and they're thinking it's a way that they feel okay. If, if you call me, I'm okay. I know you're not, I know you're coming back. Okay. If you call me, I know you're coming back. If you come home, if I hear from you, oh, we're still good. Yeah. Okay. But when I don't, I get anxious. I get anxiety begins to overwhelm me. Mm. All right. And that's part of what that is. Okay. That's a very, very interesting uh, emotion that I think really impacts or just the feeling that really impacts dating. Let me ask you about this one, because now my perception of casual dating is getting a little tricky. I'm like, is there a way to casual date? I'm just kind of very in a place where I'm looking to discover, is that possible? Now, what I'm finding, unfortunately, is that when I go out and casual date, when I get active, I've, now that I'm understanding the dynamic a lot more and I'm actually speaking to women who are having these different issues, some of the issues were with guys just like me. Just like you. Just like me. It's guys that are out not intentionally dating. And what I'm realizing is that I'm an entire trap because it's what I realized. This is just me being very real. Okay. If I communicate to a woman that I only want to casually date, the only woman, only type of woman, or I don't want to say type of woman, the condition that that woman has to be in, especially if she's a good woman, and I date good women, good women. You do? They have to be in the emotional <laughs> state of loneliness or hurt because those good women, they know that they're looking for intention. So the only way that they will be receptive, in my opinion, is if they're in a place to where they're look, they're leading with their hearts versus taking what they actually know to be the healthier choice into consideration. I'm gonna add another group of women in there yeah. because I, I would agree with those two groups of women. They're not. They're not. They're not. They're not. Uh, they're not bad. They're great women. They're just in look the, at my emotional damn face. state. Look at my face. Yeah. First off. You kept talking. Now, I got to debunk some of that shit you just said. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. He added that. I'm going to add it so I can put it all so, in one bucket. To a certain one, extent, one do you bucket. agree with that? So you're saying pretty much the only women that will agree to casually date are women that have experienced some kind of hurt. No, no. The only women that are agreeing to care after they, if they've communicated to me, hey, I'm looking for something serious. Okay. And I respond, I am not. Okay. And they still continue to put themselves in a situation with somebody who has already communicated up front that they are only interested in a casual situation. Mm. What kind of emotional state do you think that person is in? I think that person is in the – I'm just now coming to this realization. Okay. I'm thinking that that woman is a lovely woman. She's a good woman. She's looking for love. Now, because she sees me, uh -huh. and, but it's been some time since, she, since she's been able to come across okay. somebody okay. like me. Okay. And even though I got the red flag up, she still reluctantly like. Because I, I can change his heart. I can change his thought process. Exactly. Well, I, I'm, would you please go so I can. Do you and, agree and so, with so, so there's there, there's some validity. I, you, when you clarify the okay. second go round, okay. which, may, which makes No, sense. no, no. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree with that. Actually, I was going to add, I thought we were actually talking about another group of women who actually was consensual with actually, you see, the biggest difference that the group I was going to bring in is a woman who actually does not, is claiming she does not want, I also, who, you know, you meet those women who, I don't want nothing serious either. Like who claim that, but we know that's not true. A woman who's not honest with herself about what she really wants. So she engages in casual situations, maybe because she don't believe she can really have yeah, yeah. A, a, a real healthy relationship. Right. Right. I, I meet a lot of women like right. that right. as well. Great women. So I'm just curious about your perspective on that. All right. So let me let me separate them. Okay. Um, let me, Tashawn, let me deal with yours first. Yeah. There are women um, who do, they lie to you. They don't lie to themselves. Because when I say they don't lie to themselves, in their heart, they know they want a serious relationship, right? They do. And what they do is many times is when they tell you 
that they don't is you said something so powerful. Either they don't believe they can have it or don't believe they deserve it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so what they'll do is they'll go along to get along. Yep. And so they'll go along with your program because you're a nice guy. Uh, all right. Right. Because you're a nice guy and I'm, I'm, and I'm going to go to what you You're going to treat them right. You're going to treat them right. However, what's happening at that moment, what is really happening to them is they are really setting themselves up. And, you know, and I think they're setting themselves up to really perpetuate the same thing over and over. Oh, again. yeah. Same pattern. Uh, and yep. so it's the same pattern. And so what happens is like. Even when I was out there years ago, people, a lot of my people on my line, they think, oh, this man, he's been married a long time. I was like, look, okay, I've been married a long time. I've been doing right a long time. But shit, this is the shit I need to tell people. I had to cuss yeah, on this. Yeah, because we look, because me and Ty, we, we out there. Number one, <laughs> thing, things change, but human behavior has not changed. Facts. It has not. 50 years ago, they was cheating. Nick, cheating 50 years later. The way, the way we look at stuff is saying, we got social media, but I always tell people, understand this. What I do is not deal with what people are doing with doing. I deal with why we're doing it. Yeah. Human behavior. That's why I'm telling you, yes, that's what the people do. And, a lot, and, and getting back to you, you're right. They find a nice guy in you. You tell them, hey, I don't want a serious relationship. Hey, and, and many of them, they see the attributes in you. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's a good guy, good looking guy. He's ambitious. He's all of these things. And then they hope that I can change him. They hope that the situation might be different after they get to know me. Mm -hmm. Right. And then they go along. And so I got to ask you all a question. Is your, does your definition of casual dating include sex? Casual uh, dating yes. can absolutely include sex. No, 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 no. Does it include sex? Absolutely. Yeah. There's the problem. There's one of the problems. Facts. All right, so let me break this down. When she agrees to have sex with you in a casual dating format, see, this is the part that people don't know. So once you have sex, sex is a powerful thing. I'm not, I always tell people, I'm not telling you not to have sex. I always say, they say, well, I always say, well, what's your goal? Because if your goal is a relationship, you probably shouldn't have sex right away. You should probably collect that alone before you have sex. Because what happens to people is there, there is a, what, a, what is called a love cocktail that is released in your brain. So these three hormones, the first hormone is oxytocin. This oxytocin is a bonding chemical. Same chemical that is released when a baby, when a mother has a baby. And that's the reason why they give the baby to the mother so the mother can breastfeed. That hormone is released at that moment. Mm. That bonding chemical. Same bonding chemical is released when you turn over and slap that ass, okay? Yeah. <laughs> now listen. Now, then you have the dopamine. The dopamine is the feel-good chemical that is released. So now whenever you call them, they feel good. Now after having sex, you cuddle they, the, the bonding chemical. Now you made them feel good. Mm -hmm. And then you throw in the serotonin, which is the calming chemical, right? And so it makes you feel calm when I'm with you. Yeah. So now you got this love cocktail, mm -hmm. all right? And so now all of a sudden you ever notice how after sex, they, they have, after sex is when it all starts, right? Most of the time. Yeah. Not all the time, but most of the time, as soon as you hit that ass, that's when it starts, right? Yes. When, because of the release of these hormones. And what I tell women is, and now you cannot collect data effectively because you bypass the neocortex in your brain, which is the logical part of your brain. And now every decision you make is based on the limbic part of your brain, which is where your emotions reside. And so now I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love, but it's an illusion. Mm -hmm. It's an illusion, y'all. Yeah. And that's why casual dating, why I tell them, meet a guy like Ryan, tell Ryan, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to mm -hmm. casually date. We're going to casually date. Mm -hmm. But we ain't going to have sex. And guess what I'm about to do? Bow, bow. Peace. And so, <laughs> you know what I say? If he leaves, then he wasn't going to ever give you what you wanted anyway. That's so, a great point. And that's, and that's how you feel to him out, ladies. That's a great point. That, that's how you do it. That's and how you thing, feel to him out. This is the thing. This is the thing, Ken. Now that I've come to discover this, okay. you know, like I said, I'm trying to figure it out. Sure. But on one hand, we can communicate this to women and say, hey, this is what the situation is. But I still think that women are going to find themselves 
as much as we can put, I can literally have a sign up that says that. Stay away from me. I'm toxic. I'm a trap. <laughs> toxic I wood. Know, but there's exactly. <laughs> but it's still going to be women that are going to fall into that situation. So sure. I want you to tell us how can how can a a, a a good woman how can she what can she do in her personal life to avoid getting in those emotional states of anxiousness or um loneliness like how can she keep away like what can she do in her personal life is a routine like what is it what's the remedy for it so you said two things you said anxiousness and loneliness those yeah are two very different things got it okay now the truth is let's deal with loneliness see you can be alone without being lonely so one of the things i tell people is a woman you become much more attractive when you got your own thing going on when you are focusing on you when you are focusing on you, now your energy is different. All of a sudden, when you make you a priority, I'm not talking about in a way where you down all men are, ain't shit. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about somebody who says that I'm wonderful, that at the end of the day, I deserve to have it. I've changed. And what that is, that's reprogramming your subconscious mind. Okay. And so, but it is attractive when you find someone like that now. There, now let's be honest, y'all. If we be, because you know what I'm developing right now. What's that? <laughs> I am developing, y'all. This, this it's called the the date the ultimate dating guide. Okay. Mm. It's taking me I like six that. months. We need it. It's gonna be dating if you're 20 years old, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, 40 to 50, 50 to 60. Anything. How you ask questions? How you date? Who should pay for the first date? It's gonna be the ultimate dating guide. And the reason I'm doing that is because you get all of these people out here who got all of this advice, right? And most of them don't know what the hell they're talking about. They don't have a clue. You know why they don't have a clue? Because they don't understand human behavior. They don't understand why we do what we do, why men do what they do, why right. women do what they do. And so the, the, the one thing that I tell people, amongst other things, I say, listen, why is it that we get training on everything, our jobs? We get mentored, we get coached, but we never get coached on dating. We never get coached on relationships. We never get mentored. We Very don't true. know how to communicate. Yeah. We don't know how to resolve conflict, but we just expect it to work. Yeah. We, just, we don't get any training on it. You guys couldn't have a podcast unless you got some training on it. That's true. Unless you got some coaching <laughs> on it. We did. And what you see online, the beauty and the way it looks, they don't know that you've been coached and mentored and trained, right? Many times. Now, these guys, but you don't get coached, mentored, and trained, or relationships, communication, conflict resolution, none of li love language, none of the above, but you just expect it to work. I want to challenge you on that. I'm actually going to drop a poll. I'm about to put a poll in here right now, and I want to ask, guys, have you ever received any form of relationship or dating training? So I'm going to drop that in one second, but first... But first, I told y'all to drop them ASLs earlier. Let's see what we had. We got Deanna Baker, 54 female, Baton Rouge. K Ann, 34 female, Florida. Shout out to the fellas, Raphael yeah, yeah, Hicks, yeah. 37 male, Vegas. CT Rob, 50 male, Dallas. Oh, some of those I'm not even going. I'm not even going to call y'all. Y'all located too close. I see some people in Atlanta, South Florida. Y'all too close. I ain't even going to call y'all out. <laughs> but real quick, I also want to give a shout out to Andre Hatchet. Andre Hatchet, man, look. You the greatest always supports the channel. Every show. Because of that, he does have a heavy influence on what we put out. Who will match me the best on the web? I agree. King Anderson, listen, we here, bro. We here. They are. They are. I, I know exactly what you was responding to, and that's absolutely true. We got Mira. Mira. She remind me of my, my mom. My mom, she going to give. She just going she gonna to give, and she going to be like, hey, look. This is what we're doing. Yeah. And she's going to be very consistent. Shout out to Mir for dropping that super chat. April D, love it here. I'm about to start dating back soon, learning some new stuff. Of course, key all, listen, Ken always keeps us up. And then T Thompson, welcome to the supporter. He just joined the channel. We appreciate it. And I'm going to just pause right there. Thank hey, you. It's just going so crazy listen, right now. Listen, super chats, by the way, super chats for questions for Ken right now. We're going to have questions for Ken tonight. Anybody that want to ask Ken some questions, go ahead, throw the super chats in, and we're going to go ahead and get your questions. And we got something special for y'all. We have something. Y'all better stay up in here because we have something so special just for the Harley Initiated family tonight. We brought Ken all the way down here from North Carolina to tell y'all. So y'all hang in here. But Ken, I got a real fun question for you because I thought about this. I actually cooked this question up today, and I wrote this shit down. I said, this one is for Ken today. 
You I thought about this one. Yeah, because let's it. talk about this past trauma. Because I have not yet met a woman that is not dealing with some past trauma. Honestly, it's not too many men that's not dealing with some level of past trauma. Because sure. trauma is trauma. I mean, trauma is honestly a part of life, y'all. It is. Like, trauma is a part of life. I don't even think we should just look at trauma as a bad thing all the time. Because it's life puts obstacles in front of us. Obstacles are put in front of us to make us better. It's either it's just whether or not you've dealt with it the right way. But off my soapbox, okay. I thought about this today. And when it comes to trauma as it relates to women's past relationship history, okay. I want to get your feedback on this because this is something the fellas talk about in private, but we're going to bring it to the world. Would you say a relationship has a higher likelihood of success? If a man dates a woman with absolutely no relationship history, she's never had any prior real relationships before she is green or a woman with an abundance of relationship history, or let's just say more relationship history, but all of those uh, previous relationships were absolutely toxic. Okay. <laughs> What's your thoughts on that? You could, you 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 thought about that, didn't you? I thought about that <laughs> you, one. You thought about that. <laughs> I thought about uh, that one. I want to get your thoughts. So I want to look at this two one or two ways. If you were, I'm, and you know, I'm good for answering a question with a question. Three hundred in the room right yeah, now, by the way, Ken. They so, ready for you. So here's what I will say to you. All right, if you grew up in a remote village in Brazil, yes, right, away from everybody else, and all you ate was red snapper fish all day. Okay. Could you thrive and live an, a, a, an abundant life in your community? Yes. Absolutely. You could absolutely, because that would be all that you would know. Is that right? That's a fact. And that, and then you would appreciate that because that would be, you understand it is abundance in that the land gave us this, right? Yes. You would view it for what it is, absolutely. the abundance for sustenance so that I could live. Mm -hmm. If it is your first relationship, your only relationship, and you are not mar you are not marred by other things, other thoughts, and you know that I understand this relationship is about abundance and love. Yes, you could absolutely thrive. Now, one school of thought says that I could thrive in that. I would, I could thrive, and I, and you know, I'm, I, I might cuss sometime, but I love God, and I truly believe that He designed it where we were supposed to have sex with one woman, right? Right. I think, but I think we it got screwed up along the way, and then we got that. But, but to answer your question, yes. Now, let me go to the second person. Then I'm gonna over, I'm gonna give you an overall answer. Okay. To her. The second one is 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 there validity in knowing what not to do, right? Mm. Is there validity in knowing, can you build a million dollar company and knowing what not to do? Absolutely. I don't, I know what not to do. I know not to go down this. I know not to do this. However, however, in knowing not to do, does it hinder you and the things you should do? Right. That's the, that's the bigger question. Yes. So sometimes, and that goes back to the three reasons why people don't have relationships. It's because of the trauma part. It's because those are the things that to keep you from moving forward because they are telling you what not to do. Yeah. All right. So I think you can learn both ways. However, if it were me, but, but, but I'm saying it from where I am today. That's what I want to hear, Ken. If it were me today, would I want somebody green wh where I am, where I am? Absolutely. I would want somebody who hadn't had any relationships mm. that I could mold. If I today, the man that I am today, the one that I ain't out here sucking and fucking and trying to lick and stick. I'm that I'm not him. All right. So what I'm saying is to appreciate love at its essence, the beauty of love of somebody loving me that I could love fully. Oh, absolutely. Now, I'm not saying the person who's been in toxic relationships, yeah, if that person is willing to grow just like me, we all have had trauma. Mm. And that's that, but that's the beauty of that though. And I gotta say this the beauty of trauma, the beauty, it was designed that way. God designed it that way because once we had it, we could move and grow from it. Mm. See, it was designed that way. Let me ask you guys a question a, rob a rubber band. 
A rubber band, if the rubber band is not stretched, if when you pull it, when you pull it all the way back, it goes further, doesn't it? Yeah. Right. It goes further because it's stretched more, right? And it's able to catapult into way in front of you because of that stress that's put on it. Right. And so that to me, that stress is necessary. It that's is a necessary. very good point. I mean, it's just the stress is necessary. The learning. But what happens is when people aren't willing to learn from the stress, yep. they're not willing to grow from it. When they blame everybody else because they're stressed, then it keeps the, the rubber band on the tape. You don't get the date because if you go in, I remember we had Wall Street Trap on here. He said it's so much data in failure. He said it's Beautiful. so much data in failure. Yes. And that is su- that was such a bar. That's for life, business, relationships, everything. If you fail at something and you know how to properly go back, reevaluate. And here's mm. the thing. Going through your failure, that's prob- that could be a painful process. It was. You, you even pissed off. You even it failed. Is. It's emotions attached to the failure. And you actually got to go through it and reevaluate and find the root cause to why you failed, most people don't want to do that. Most people, much is much easier for you to point the finger at why it, it happened is. without you really or figuring out what it was. deal with it. Yeah. That's what we're seeing. We're seeing just women and both men just not even putting themselves out there. I got to give y'all a story, though. Yeah. So this might, this might help somebody. So I remember, man, when I got out of college, I was in love with my girlfriend. She lived in New York. And I'll never forget it, man. I went up there. And she told me, you know, we I was in North Carolina. She moved it to, she was up there. And I was like, so we we, we were kind of rocky. Because she had told me, either you're going to marry me or I'm moving back home. She gave you an ultimatum. Gave me an ultimatum. Okay. And then I said, well, I think it's probably best you move back home. All right. But anyway, so when I got up there, we were trying to rekindle the relationship. <laughs> And so I got up there. You I know, was the playing Ken. I was playing Ken back there. <laughs> you know, yeah. you asked the question. I was like, so you, you slept with anybody since you're up here? And she got quiet. Mm-hmm. All right. So I was like, yo, slept with anybody since you've been here? She said, that doesn't matter. What matters is if we're going to rekindle this. Okay. Well, you so, asked her if she slept with anybody? Yeah, I asked her. Ken, 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 I'm, oh, I'm, wow. I'm quite shocked at this. Well, let me, I'm telling y'all a real story. Okay. This was back when I was young. Okay. okay. All right, when okay. I was young, I asked her that because I loved her. This was somebody I thought I was going to marry, but I just wasn't ready at the time. So I thought we would rekindle the relationship. But let me tell you what happened. The reason I'm, I'm telling this story for a reason. So, so finally throughout the day, we had went to a hotel. Yeah, we went to a hotel because I'm like, I, I hadn't been with her. Her mom even was kind of sanctioned it. I was like, all right. <laughs> so we went to the hotel. She sanctioned it. So I brought the question up again. So it came out that she had been with this dude or whatever. And it, and it crushed me. Oh, yeah. Crushed me. Because man, imagine. Every man you know hates man? that. Every man crushed me, right? So I, we didn't even have sex. I didn't want to have sex with her that night. So damn. Oh, I, I damn. did. I did. Ooh, I, that's it's wrong. Different. He was disgusted. That's it's wrong. Different. <laughs> it was different because I loved her, right? Yeah, yeah. So anyway, long story short, I'm going to tell you what happened. So we ended up the weekend, I realized, after that weekend, I realized, not because of the sex. It wasn't because of the sex. It was because we were evolving to be different people, all right? Mm. I knew the relationship was over. Not because of the sex, y'all. Okay, because I was, you know, doing what I do, too. Yeah. All right. So, but I got in, the, I got in, I'm, I'm going to tell you, this is the culmination of this story. I got in the cab. She called me a cab to go to the airport, right? And I was, I, I cried all the way to the cab. And the dude, the, the dude that was driving was a foreigner. So he looking at this big dude, like, he like, why are you crying? I mean, so I'm crying. And I thought- You was in the car crying? I was in the car. I wasn't boo. When tears were coming out of my eyes. I mean- Oh, no, I, she had I, you down bad, man. though. Yeah, she That's had me. bad, though. Yo, she had me. I loved her. <laughs> my man was crying. Okay, listen, listen. I'm not making any bones about it. I absolutely loved her. But here's what I thought. I would never love again like I love now. Mm. How many women out there say that I would never love again? All the time. Women, um, men too. Men. Men. Until I've met the woman I was supposed to love that I'm still in love with today, 21 years later. And I'm telling y'all, listen, and I'm not that dude, I don't want to get on here and be like, like I'm sanctimonious and shit. No. I did some foul shit. I was lying. I, I told more lies than an average car salesman. <laughs> I'm, th- I'm not lying. Ryan was a car salesman, by the way. <laughs> I was. I was. That I was, makes I was sense. a car salesman for like three years. That's why I'm so smooth. Yeah, that, That's why I'm yeah, so smooth. That makes sense. <laughs> so, but 
I, and I say this to, to everybody out there. You can love again, but you have to give yourself permission to love again. Ooh. You have to give yourself permission to trust again. Every student I have, they say, coach, but I don't know. I said, only you can give yourself permission. I can't give you that permission. And so I gave myself permission to love again after I did a whole bunch of dirt. Cause you know, when men get cheated on, you know, they say they want to, they don't tell anybody. Cause I saw the clip y'all put up. Oh yeah, yeah. That was a powerful yeah, clip. That's very Cause men don't say it. Women, the reason why they, they, they tell everybody I'm hurting. Here's what you did to me. You hurt me. Men keep it inside. Well, they think I'm just going to fuck some more bitches and I'm going to be good. Right, but, right. But at the end of the day, it creates more pain. They don't heal they hoe. They, they, yeah. 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 And so what I tell them, listen, this is not what you're going to do. If you want to heal, let's heal. But but what you're doing is you're masquerading. You're creating an illusion. And so now you bust thir- you bust a thousand nuts and you still fucked up. Yeah. Mm. It's it's quite different. And maybe this, you know, I'm, I'm not a woman, but I'm thinking it's quite different from a woman who catches her man cheating and sharing that with her friends and a man catching his woman cheating and sharing that with his friends. Because the thing is, when the woman shares that she's cheated, her friends think the guy's the dog. That, that, right? that is so true. But when he the, had to do yeah, something. He, he had, had to do something. <laughs> but when the man says his wife cheated, guys, like, lose a level of respect for the dude. It's kind of like, like, ooh, like, you kind of less than and, like, and, for the and for the chick and for oh yeah. because she is she is a she's not oh my god jezebel slut yeah. hope <laughs> every yeah, yeah. every negative name i could come up with and up. you stupid and you stupid for dating weak and you weak for you're dating. weak yeah that's the that's so the, that that's why men don't share because you get like oof. think about it How, first of all i don't even want my guys thinking about my wife in that way Right, like my close guys, if she cheated on me, first of all, she probably gonna be my wife no more. The, the guy I am today, the man I am right now, yeah. that's how I stand. But now the guys see her as open. She's oh my open. god, they might smack. I feel like they might smack my wife on the ass walking by or something. I, they, hey, in the most extreme situation, <laughs> she might. Hey, yeah, I mean, it's, it's oh, fair game oh, now. Let's be oh, real. Oh, let's be real, because the men are oh, critical. Men you. are critical. He said, I think I slap my wife on that. <laughs> I mean, she, that's just what's okay, going on. So I got a deep question for y'all. That, yo, I coach men too. So you, you just so we clear. Okay. I, so I coach men, men, no bullshit, men like you, men like you. So here's my question. These, these are men, a man's man. I mean, these are not, these, when they come to me, I just want you to understand when a man comes to me. Women come to me when they want to gain something. They want to gain a new relationship. They want to gain something. Men come to me when they don't want to lose something. Mm. They don't want to lose who they got. They don't want to lose their family. They don't want to lose a relationship. So I have a new perspective. How many of you, either one of you gentlemen, do you think if your wife cheated on you, that you were deeply in love with, that you could, you would, could take her back or no? Do you think you could take can. her back? Can here's the thing. Do I think I can take it back? Yes. Am I am I possible? Is it possible for me to heal and to get over these things? Of course it's possible. I'm not saying it's not possible. Right. I can get over, I can do just about anything I put my sure, mind on. Sure, sure, sure. Am I willing but, to but, put the work in to heal to go about doing that? Good question. Especially when with, with the type of man I feel like I'm going to be in my marriage. Again, assuming I will, I'm a good man. Assuming. <laughs> Assuming I she believe stepped you. out, I believe you'll be a good man. I really, I I, you'll be a and good I man. plan on it. I, I believe plan, I do not plan on being on no crazy stuff with my wife. Yeah, man. Now, I, good I, men I, make mistakes. So good I, man, you you can maybe you fell off. Maybe something is a period of time where you wasn't really performing at your best. Okay, that's and and, and then still. But what if she wasn't performing at her best at one time, just like what he just said? But going back to the situation <laughs> <laughs> right now, can I see myself willing? To do that, a woman that you are madly in love with, and you know, love, it's, it's easy for us to speculate. But the reason I ask you that, a woman that you love with all your heart. Oh my God. See, God. I'm not, I'm not gonna make this shit easy. That's like the best man movie. Yeah, Remember that? Remember infidelity that? is not an easy thing. The show that I'm on, it, this shit's real. That shit's not easy. And I, I'm making it hard for you because I want you to think about a woman. Who you've thought that you you, you give me your answer, Ken. I'm putting it, I'm putting it right back on you, exactly. Ken. Hey, 21 you know, years, up. 21 years of marriage because you really married, you got some real experience, you got this wife, 
She goes out, she steps out, she cheats. What you doing, Ken? Damn. You know what? I know it's hard because I asked myself the same question. My wife and I was riding down the day and I was like, damn, if she cheated, would I, I mean, am I willing to go through the process? I used to say no until three, there are three men that have come to me way harder than me and have broken down in front of me and I see what that pain looks like. Mm. But when a man said to me, he said, now I contributed to this. The truth is y'all, infidelity just doesn't happen all the time. Like we think, like there, there's a cause and effect to pretty much everything. I'm not saying they were at fault, they wasn't fucking around, but they, each one of them, I helped restore their marriage. Mm. And I'm like, God use me as, as crazy as I am, but I am committed to love. I'm committed to relationships. I'm committed to being an honorable man. You might not like me, but you will never say I'm dishonorable. You will never say I'm not a man of integrity. And so when I look at the men, when I look at the guys who said, you know what, I will give you another chance. And I'm reminded of one thing. If God gave me all these chances, every time, every time I've messed up, man, I've done some foul shit. <laughs> Likewise. I'm a relationship coach, man. <laughs> I've coached thousands. I've changed thousands of lives. Mm -hmm. God will use imperfect people to do a perfect work. And I'm not trying to make this a religious thing because, you know, I might cuss the next minute. I mean, <laughs> fuck it. But I'm going to say, but listen. This is the only show, this is the only show you can do that. I right. love, right. I, I love <laughs> what God, I love what he's done for me to have this opportunity. So I used to say no. But I say right now, I don't know. Um, ah, I don't know. It's tricky. You kind of played the gray area on that one, Ken. Well, you played the gray area on that one, Ken. That's a long ways from no. Well, see, this that's a, a long paradox. way from no. And it's yes, a, and, and it's, it's a, a long, long way, way from yes. All right, so you yeah, know what? Yeah, that's an, me, honestly, I'm that's in, not that's not even customary for Harley initiated. Ken, you're gonna have to make a decision yes, right now. Yes, I would work on it if 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 the stipulations are met. Cap. I Cat. would, man. Is that true? Hey, hey we about to see a whole bunch of simps in the chat. Simp, simp, I don't simp, 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 simp. I don't give a fuck what they call me. I don't fuck what somebody call me. Oh, I've been calling oh, 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 Ladies, oh, listen, we still- we, oh, we, sorry, we, sorry, we, sorry, sorry. Yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I said I was gonna cuss on y'all's show, man. <laughs> no, listen, he don't listen. like when you call him a simp. No, dude, they gonna start cussing. No, I don't mind. Wait, wait, hold on. I am a simp, I believe. Can't hold tight. Almost 400 people in the chat before the one hour mark. So this is record breaking, oh, guys. Good, we man. headed to 800. The highest we've had in the chat at one time has been 753. This is only like our eighth or ninth live anyway. So this oh, wow. is growing, this thing is growing. But look, real quick, shout out to Lydia Ware. She says, very good topic. A woman who chooses casual dating after being told upfront doesn't see herself as a queen. Ooh, Lydia, I'm not sure how they gonna feel about that one. Shout out to the fellas, Apollo 79. That's love. We appreciate you. And shout out to Therese Buford. Appreciate y'all. As a young man, I learned to use masks slash scapegoat my issues until this relationship with someone who has trauma awakened what I hid. So that's really big. Ooh, that's and big. Uh, real quick, since we got so many people in the chat and so many people are chiming in, I'm actually getting ready to close out this poll. I'm satisfied. 17 minutes, 141 votes in the poll. Wow. The question, have you ever received any form of structured dating training within the past three months? And 74%, I'm a little upset with y'all, 74% says no, they haven't received any formal level of, of dating. And I'm just I'm curious. I'm surprised what, that's just, that low. That's, that's I, low. Listen, the I good, thought it would have been higher than that. Honestly, this is going to be our lucky day. Okay. Because the reason Ken came, one of the stipulations to that is was for him to have something very, very, very special for y'all. Okay, mm -hmm. Ken is doing something very, very special. And I'm going to keep holding it tight. Y'all better stay up in here, though, because this conversation is going to get great. And for the people that hang in here and stay in here, we're going to get y'all something very, very, very special and exclusive just for the Harley Initiated family. So y'all stay patient. I also saw somebody say, oh, is Ken taking questions? Yes, he is. Send a super chat over. Send a super chat over yeah. with your question, and we will take your question. 
And, I and, actually, and real, real, real quick, because guys, the chat is going crazy. Please join the live membership all, almost over 400 because we will, in a few weeks, we will be turning on that members only chat throughout the live because the chat is getting too crazy. Also, we will be selecting, so hold tight on this, we will be selecting our first official moderator of the hardly initiated chat since mm. it's been going so crazy and we're only going to select one person but the stipulation is one you have to have been present on, on our past lives you have to be regular because obviously you got to attend the lives right. and two you have to have been a member for at least 30 days now we are going to in, uh, increase the number of moderators as the chat increases as well as as we progress because sometimes people gonna need to take a day off or two so i'm gonna go ahead and, and, and let tyshawn get back to it but i did want y'all to know that our next one we're going to choose at 90 days so that's three months but right now next week we're going to choose our, our first moderator so i gotta go ahead and um, i'm gonna go on a slight tangent because i want to bring it back to this past trauma but i got a slight tangent here sure because you brought something up in that story that you previously told where you asked this woman about her sexual past me and ryan actually got into a whole debate okay because i actually told ryan i just did not like because, you know, the body count question. And Ryan actually said it could be actually a good, it could be a valuable question to actually figure out when dating somebody. You get a, it's a certain, again, it's a certain bit of data you get on that person. That, was, that, was, talking, a, that was a private conversation, though. I, that was a private <laughs> conversation. <laughs> hey, and but look, was, there were very, very, very special stipulations <laughs> to that. So I'm not sure why Tyshawn just put me on black. I'm just black saying, like I mean, I think that's very relevant right now. Go I think ahead, it's go very ahead, relevant. We're we talking about okay. asking questions to gather data. Right? Asking subconscious questions to gather data. So now here's the thing. Is a person's sexual history, is that not is that conscious or subconscious? Depends on how you ask it. Okay. Okay. So this brings me to that. How important is someone's sexual history as it relates to qualifying them as somebody that you should potentially be building with or having as a long-term partner? How important is sexual history? Okay, I got an answer for you. So here's the, here's the way you answer that. All right, tell me how important is a woman who is ambitious to you? Ambitious? Just ambitious. I just threw ambitious out there. How I important is that on a scale of one to ten? I like a woman who's driven. Okay, so would say it would say in your top ten, would it be up near one, one, two, three? No. Okay. But no. it's not. So what would be one? What would be very important? Nurturing and supporting. Okay. Nurturing and supporting. Yeah. Nurturing and uh, nurturing support are number one. Okay. For sure. That's so, number one for me. So you really want to know about nurturing and support. So you would ask subconscious questions about nurturing and support because that would tell you something about her, right? That's a good, yes. Right. Absolutely. So for someone, their sexual nature their sexual ideology may be important to them because that would tell them something, especially if they ask it in a subconscious way about the person's nature. Okay. So for you, that may not be important. For him, it might be. And so what I tell people is you only ask subconscious questions based on your emotional needs and the importance of things to you in a relationship. If, that, if it ain't important about a person's body count or their sexual promiscuity, if that's not important to you, then you don't have to ask it on a subconscious level. See, what we do is, here's the problem in dating. This is the problem. We lump everybody in, in this one thing and say, this thing is important. So what I teach people is to create a list of importance. We have this, I have this whole way I do it. Show me the things that are important to you. And then I'm going to create subconscious questions based on the things that are important to you. Mm. So if it's not important whether a man clean up or not, we're not going to create questions based on that. But if it is important, if a man c communicates with you, who talks to you, who, uh, who shows you, who wants to, you want to know about his date, so then we're going to create subconscious questions around that. So let me ask you, but, mm. but, but Ken, wouldn't you say that someone even as a man mm -hmm. who lacks, let's say a level of discipline sexually. Yes. Okay. Right. Or a woman who lacks discipline sexually. Okay. Doesn't that give you some level of understanding 
about their value system and the, the uh, their ability to make decisions as a person? Is that not important as far as you trying it to figure, important. figure out somebody uh, with a partner? You want a good decision maker, correct? Absolutely, is important. It is important to me. Yes. So you asking those questions and you and your yeah, but I ask them a different way though. I'm not asking you how many body. I'm not. I'm not asking you. That's how many men you've been with. Here's what I'm asking. Here's a subconscious. So you question. got some sexual history subconscious questions? Yes. Let me hear these. Let me hear these. Oh no, you're asking what the pay for that. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm so, all right. Here's what. Here's here's a subconscious question sexually. It's okay. In my book. So you might say, I might say, me and you having a conversation. You might ask the person. Tell me why, why sexual fulfillment is important in a relationship. We start there. Mm, you put an onion back. No, no, exactly. Okay. Remember, yeah, 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 subconscious yeah, yeah. questions. I'm going deep into your subconscious programming. So one question leads me to the next. I'm going deeper every time I cross the question. So if I ask you about success and sexual fulfillment, why it's important to you or not important, mm. now you're going to answer that. All right. And then what I'm going to do is go a little bit deeper. I said, what is the value? I said, what is the value of an orgasm in a relationship? Mm, so, like you know those. what? You see what I'm doing? Uh -huh. See, now I'm teaching them how to peel back who you are. And I'm going to get to, you're going to eventually, I'm going to get to the body count question, too. I'm going to get to the men. You may not tell me the exact number unless I get to a course, but you're going to tell me that you've been with people. A lot of them. I'm Because of the way that I'm going to do it. Natural progression. Natural progression. But most people, that's the training. Most people have never been trained on how to do that. That's Listen, that's some game there. That's the most so people now, have never been trained on how to do that. That's it's sexual history. What you got? Well, I, I think that's tricky for anybody. And I don't know if a woman will actually give you the answer. All right. I don't know if she's gonna give you the right answer. She's gonna give you something. It's gonna let you know how she considers the importance. How she views how it. How she views it for sure. But that's that. But that's it was. It, but that's more or less what it is. Right. How right. she views it. Yeah. And when we get to the point of how she views it, then all of a sudden we can begin peeling back that on you. And as we grow together, as we grow together, you're going to. Cause see, if because the, the truth is, yeah, people gonna lie. I miss your body count. Oh, I ain't been with three people. You know, they're gonna lie about that because of the way yeah. you asked it, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 It sounds like an interrogation. It sounds like yeah. interrogation. But what my my conversation, mine sounds like conversation that we I'm truly trying to get to know you. I want to get to know who you are beneath the surface. And when a person believes that you want to get to know them beyond the surface, they want you to get to know them beyond the surface. Mm. Real, real, real quick, we got a question, and and I and I got a comment about this. Uh, K Ann, she says, "Do you Ken? Do you not think, or it's probably for Tyshawn? Tyshawn, do you not think some of us when women wonder about the values of a man who sleeps around? So she's pretty Absolutely. much saying, okay, yeah, sure. I honestly think that you should consider the value of the man that you have, because again, self, ma ladies, self mastery is important. You looking for self mastery in a man." Yeah. You want to see a man who's disciplined in multiple ways. You want to watch his behavior patterns, watch his routines, look at what his day looks like. How is he managing his free time? I think all of those things tells you a lot about his values, what's important to him. And it's a, a great indicator of what man he's growing to become but let's as talk, well. But let's talk reality, though. The reality is, although that's true, men can get away with it and women cannot. And my thing is... That double standard exists. So it what does. I try to what I try to forewarn women is rather than trying to change the way men think, rather than try to change reality, you should focus on what you can change, which is your behaviors. Because women want to argue men down for days about how this is unfair or how this shouldn't be that or how if you they can, can have do sex it, and they I can, can have do sex. it. Right. But you're wasting your time because regardless of what you think. The reality is that this is how men feel. So I think that women should take that into consideration. And nobody, I'm not saying it's right. No, no. It is just, you know, it, it, you it know the funny thing is? If a woman gets mad even at another woman, the first thing she calls is a slut. <laughs> <laughs> right. Listen, right. all of us know uh, on the man and the woman's side that it's not good to have a promiscuous reputation as a woman. No man gets teased for being called a slut. If anything, you get one of these. You in the Christian world, my that's just the sad reality of the situation that we live in but let's accept it y'all and speaking speaking of that though because because we didn't we didn't talk about this, is this cool because i want to ask because we talked about the emotional state that a woman might be in if she chooses to casually date 
Right. What do you think a man, the emotional, is the man, if a man is just casually dating, he's out casually dating for five years, you know what I mean, six years, for extended periods of time, could there be some past trauma that he's actually running from as well? Absolutely. Okay. No, absolutely. I think what we have to realize, y'all, is that everybody comes with baggage. The question is, is that can I carry your bags? But if I don't know what's in your bags, so am I willing to carry your bag? So here, here's the thing. Mm. Um, we all have trauma. Come on. Listen, we make trauma a bad thing. Trauma is not a bad thing. What's bad is when we try to hide it, when we try not to get restored, rejuvenated from it, when we don't grow from it. That's yes. when it becomes the bad thing. Yes. We all have it, right? We all have it. And so what I will tell you is this. There are men out there. First off, you got to understand how the human behavior. I don't want to talk about everything I do. I talk about human behavior. Everybody does what they do because it serves them in some way. Think about this for a minute. We only do what we feel gets us something, an emotional satisfaction. At the end of the day, y'all, listen to me carefully. People are motivated for one or two reasons, either towards pleasure or away from pain. Everything. Everything you do this podcast, why it's going to give you pleasure to touch people's lives, okay? Yeah, everything boils down to, or now that being said, everybody does something because it gives them something, mm. all right? So, you got a guy out there dating multiple women, well, he's getting something out of that, he is all right, he's getting something out of that, he is now. What is he getting? Okay, he could be giving that that sexual pleasure, yeah. he validation, all of those things, sexual pleasure, but, validation. He's getting now, not only is he getting validation because now I'm the man because all of these women are allowing me. And so now he feels better about himself. He gets to affirm himself, all of those things, right? Yeah. So what I say is we have to be willing to look deeper, y'all. What we do is we ask conscious questions. We we want to get to know people on a conscious level. But listen, if a man's out there just dating and he tells you that I'm not interested in love, okay, everybody's not interested in that, right? But if he's slamming 12, 20 women, there's something he's going to... And there, I would venture to say there is a void in him. You know what? Mm. So I, I haven't actually shared this with Tyshawn, but uh -oh. I recently, this was literally a couple of days ago, I actually had an experience with a young lady. And, and after she left, I it was because it was casual. After she left, I was like, man, that was just too much. It's too much because the tear, it was still a tear. It was a, you know what I mean? And I'm feeling, I'm not, I'm not feeling anything really. <laughs> that's that, you know, it was really, <laughs> that's the, that's the unfortunate thing. I'm not feeling any, I'm not feeling the emotion that she was feeling. You know what I'm saying? It's not reciprocating in that way. Right, right, right. Because I came into it, I want to be casual. She came into it, hey, I'm one date intentional, but I'm going to deal with you. Right? But I'm, but, but I'm going to go ahead. But I'm going to go ahead and deal with you. And, 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 and I'm going to go against my own standards yes. and boundaries. So after that, mm -hmm. I was feeling some remorse about the situation because I'm really trying to dig in deeper to see why I do the things that I do. So I literally wrote down, because I, I thought to myself, well, the reason I don't want a serious relationship or date with intent now is because I want to focus on building a certain level of capacity first, then go out and date with intent. So I thought to myself, I asked myself a critical question. I'm like, well, if I had millions of dollars today, to pretty much build the biggest family that nobody's ever built, right? Would I still casually date? And I had to be honest with myself. I said, yes. So I wrote down all the things that I would have to sacrifice if I didn't casually date. And the common, out of all the things, the common thing was discipline. And that, that's my, that was my, my, I guess my light, the light bulb went off. If I start dating intentionally, it means that I would have to be more disciplined. It means that when I get in a relationship, I can only have one woman all of a sudden. When I get into a relationship, I got to tend to that relationship with the same level of relentlessness how I tend to my business. So when I thought about those things, I think that truly men who solely date casual or who spend an, an, an extended amount of time dating casual, including myself, I think the one of the biggest things that we're avoiding is becoming better men. So the responsibility, the responsibility, the responsibility that comes with that role. And that's a good point. I, I remember we recently did an interview too, and I actually said this on the show and parts of me felt like a hypocrite 
Okay. Because I, what I stated was when it comes, even the word casual, think about that casual. You, there's an aspect of your life, a whole area of your life, which is very important, especially as a man, woman relationships. That's a major pillar of a man's life. Sure. And in that area of his life, he's casual. Whereas the most powerful man is a man who's going to be intentional, intentional in every single area of his life. Right. That's going to, that's going to be the most dangerous okay. man out there. And when it comes down to it, I thought, and I'd ask myself, am I necessarily being intentional mm -hmm. in every single area of my life or the areas that I have put value on, the areas that I have chose to be intentional in? And when I had to face the reality of the situation, I, you know, I really thought to myself when I went home that night and I was like, I'm about to get out of the game, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to get, yet, but I know I'm gonna get some to. intentionality. I, or, or more importantly, I'm going to get some intentionality in this area of my life. I actually did come to that resolution because you're right, Ryan. Like we literally will become better men when we become more intentional here. We become sharper. We right. become faster. We become more productive. More disciplined. All, more, more disciplined. All those things are going to be a byproduct. Of that more courageous too that's the thing because it takes courage to do something different like that mm -hmm. and bring and, and to bring a woman into your life and to be and to be serious in that level yeah, it, it really is. does yeah well it brings a lot of things you know but i want to i want to go back to something you said okay okay you said discipline do you think you 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 don't have discipline in that area when it comes to women I think my discipline is lacking. Not stating that I sleep with every Kim, Sue, and Sally. That's okay, not what right. I'm saying. But can I say that I've dealt with women knowing that the end, that the consequence was going to be a level of emotional discomfort, high levels of emotional discomfort for her, and a levels of remorse for me for knowing that this was going to be the same. It's predictable for me at this point. I know based on how much time I spend with a woman casually dating who says that she doesn't want to casually date, I know what will happen. If it's a week, it's three or four conversations about me, about how there will be no, it's it, like it's never happened. It's the same conversation about three to four times with her crying at the end. If it's three days, it's about one, maybe one and a half conversations with her having an attitude for so, a few weeks. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you know so the, the damage that so will be caused. The question is is you're doing that even though you know that it's going to lead to emotional duress. Right? Yeah, yeah. So let me go back to the question, discipline. Discipline, this is where people get it wrong about discipline. Discipline is not something you have. You see, discipline is something you use. Now, when I tell people is, I said, you know how I know? Because you got discipline in your business. Y'all send out videos on point every day. You work out, you do whatever. You use discipline in the areas, much like you said, that you want to use them in. You just choose not to use it in that area. Facts. Now, that mm. being said, is just like you. Yeah. Like many men, uh, many women, women too, not just men, but we disconnect ourselves from others' emotional trauma. So we make it okay. I've told you that I want to be casual. Right. I told you that I want to be casual. And because I told you that I want to be casual, I can disconnect from your emotional trauma that comes with I'm going to fuck you and we're going to do what we're going to do as many times as we do it. But I told you we was not going to be. I'm not responsible. I'm not responsible. But you are responsible. We are. You are responsible. Right. You're responsible because it's like if I tell a person, look, well, you ain't looking. I'm going to steal something at your store. I, I stole it. I'm responsible for their emotional trauma, even though I told them, y'all, why don't we absolve ourselves of that? Mm. We as men do it a lot. We absolve ourselves. That's why I became a relationship coach. I changed because I realized all of the people I had hurt because I took responsibility for that pain. I'm responsible. Y'all, let's if we if you're gonna do it, do it. But at least let's not be disingenuous about it. Yeah. And let's say this is what it is. If you've been genuine about it, you 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 causing some damage. First of all, if you became a relationship coach because all the people you hurt, I'm <laughs> Me so and Ryan, I'm about to be king uh, relationship hey, coach. What, 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 I'm about to be Bill Belichick. <laughs> 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 hey, I want to ask this. I want to ask this too. 
because we in the space of trauma, I think this is relevant too. We kind of went into sexual history, the importance of knowing that right. when you're talking and vetting someone. I want to know this too, Ken. How important is it to know the relational history? Mm-hmm. Like, how important is it to know the successes or failures of the relationships that have came prior to be able to understand okay. whether or not this is somebody that you should be able um, to build with long term. Help, help me out on that. Oh man, this is you teed me up beautifully. That's what I do. <laughs> I go back to that. Did you? You good? Both of y'all good? Hey, look. <laughs> what I always say is okay. It's important in that. What have you learned? What have you grown? So this is what I always tell people when, when I talk about the subconscious questions and how you date. So now I'm going to ask you, tell me three things or two things that you learned from your last relationship that's going to help you be better in your next relationship, mm. right? So now, if you say that when all, all, all men cheat, that's what I learned. Well, then you're not ready. I know that because you learn much more from that relationship, but you're only willing to focus your energy on one aspect of it that's negative. And so, yes, the relationship, the relationship history is important in that it shows you what the person's growth level is. Mm, that's true. That's what. That's why it's supremely important. If I ask you these subconscious questions, and the only thing that I get from you is men ain't shit or women ain't shit, I know you didn't learn anything, and I'm cautious. I'm Yo, like, oh. that's a great point because a woman would quickly share her negative past experiences, but you can look at the woman and see if she's different from that. So it's like, if you sharing all this crazy stuff this last dude did, and you still in this same condition, you know what I mean, with these same issues, it's like, what are you really telling me? You're telling me that you experienced this level of trauma and you haven't, it's like they coming out saying they haven't worked worked through it. Right. And that's, yo, so to answer your question, Tyson, to answer your question is, yes, relation, relation, Relationship history, relational history is important in that what I want to know is where did you come from? Mm. You were here, but you now you're here. Okay, okay, that tells me something. But if you were here and you way back here now, that tells me something too, that there's a lot of healing that needs to take place before we could ever cultivate something different. That's how I look at it. So real quick, I want to give a shout out to one of our members, Pauline Philippi. She just joined. Yes. Yo, Pauline, I ain't Pauline, I ain't seen you in the chat yet. Like, yo, I want y'all to welcome Pauline to the to, to the membership. And I want y'all to invite Pauline to the chat because I got some audience members that's on the sideline. I know y'all want to dip your toe in the chat because the chat goes crazy. Yes, yes. So yes, please, yes, yes. Pauline, if you're still in the room, go ahead and drop something in the chat to let us know you're here with us. Tyshawn, where we so at with that? You know, we, we talked a lot about the past trauma, and I hope, listen, by the way, y'all got questions for Coach Ken. I want y'all to go ahead and send that super chat. Questions for Coach Ken, send the, t- shoot send super, the chat. super chat. We're going to go ahead and take y'all questions, okay? And we're going to give y'all something special. For people just coming in, we got something special for y'all at the end. Coach came down here to give y'all something special for the people that hang in here. Just be patient. We're going to keep this conversation going. I want to know this because another thing that you talked about that can potentially hinder somebody from having a a successful relationship is adopting negative mindsets. Yes. We talked about this a little bit earlier. Okay. This could be from their friends. This could be from social media. This could be from the family members. However, adopting negative mindsets, right? right? I want you to give me some examples. Because first off, before I even go into it, I want you to give me some examples of some common, you know, mindsets or some common things that people might adopt from the people close to them that you often see in the space with the people that you work with. Okay. So one of the things, it's funny you say that, you know, I, I, I laugh because some of the women that I deal with are over 40 that I coach into, okay. and I've coached them into great relationships Okay, because they have a mindset because I often, I often say you can't unknow what you know. You can't unsee what you've seen. See, wisdom is a good thing and it's a bad thing too. Because now here's what happens is, is wisdom is, is good if you learn from wisdom and you grow from wisdom. But what happens is now I've seen this. Grandmama told me, listen, a man going to be a man. One of the things they always say, mm. a man going to be a man. He yep. going to do what you do. Okay. That is subconscious programming. 
Okay. Mm. And then what what do your friends say? Girl, all men cheat. All men cheat. All men cheat. All men cheat. I, <laughs> I, love, I don't cheat. Love saying that. I know a lot of men that don't cheat. Men I like don't saying cheat that. on my wife. And so what happens when you hear this, the first thing I tell people is you can't get right on wrong information. Mm. Okay. You can't. I said, stop taking advice from broken people. If you want to get healed, go to people who heal. If I want to learn how to run a podcast, I'm coming to y'all. The only I'm way. Coming to the y'all only way. You, you know what? Because yeah. you know how to do it. You know how to do it, right? So here's the thing. It's pervasive, man. All of the stuff that I hear, like one, I hear so much stuff out that is so stupid. I mean, it is so dumb. Like 50-50. Yeah, I ain't I ain't being with no man. Like I, I hear this stuff. And when I broke down on my tour the other day, so I got this tour that I'm going around from city to city. And, and I broke down something about 50-50. I, I, I'll get into it before the night is over. Okay. I'll explain to everybody listening what, what you should actually do. Oh, we coming back to the 50-50, uh, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. We coming back to it. <laughs> well, we'll go ahead, exactly. again. But so the pervasive mindset is negative because you got prognosticators, influencers, podcasts out there who profit from the division of relationships. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Who profit? That's true. Okay, you got some, I ain't, I ain't calling no names. I told my wife I ain't doing all that no more. You got you got people, women who talking about men ain't this, men ain't that. You have men talking about women ain't this, women ain't that. They built whole platforms that's the red this. pill and the pink pill. The black, they build whole <laughs> platforms. And so what I tell what I tell people is, is we are literally ODing. We are literally get, getting intoxicated on negative information. Mm. And we don't know why our subconscious programming is what it is. Now it becomes unconscious. Now I'm spitting out stuff. I'm saying stuff that I heard from somebody else that I don't that it has become my belief system because wow. I've heard it over and over again. So the way a belief system is formed, a belief system is nothing more than a thought or a statement that you accept. That's a belief system, right? Because if I accept that the sky is purple, even though the sky is blue, it see, a belief system is not based in fact. Mm. It's not always based in fact. And so now I am being programmed. I'm being programmed to think a certain way that is contrary to what I want. Mm. I want a great relationship, but I think all men cheat. They cheat, right? Right. So those are diametrically opposed. There is no way that I can have a great relationship if I keep perpetuating all men cheat, but I say I want a great relationship. Man, hold on, Ken, man. You, man, Ken. You know, and it's so funny, man. It always starts with the mindset. Yes. Ken, that's the thing. That's why if you notice, right, broke people. Right. Broke people tend to think a certain way. They do. That's why <laughs> That's why that's true. I was just having this conversation recently. Some of the most powerful books. Whenever somebody go tell their success story, you'd be like, what books change your life? They always going to say, rich dad, poor dad. Yeah. <laughs> or they're going to say, think and grow rich. <laughs> because those are books right. that have been phenomenal in the space at restructuring the way you think yes. and your belief system about money. Yes. And that is the first step to being able to even start taking action steps to create wealth. You don't just start learning marketing or finances or sales. First, you got to change the way you think yes. about money Absolutely. to now have it to be a reality in your life. And it's the same thing for relationships. It is. Because you're right. The most dangerous thing about a lot of the information floating around the internet is that a lot of this, these podcasts and other people who's teaching, the information that's toxic is packaged as personal development. Yeah. Right. So it's <laughs> it packaged. The Trojan horse. It's packaged as information that's going to make you better. But literally, as you accept it, it is anti-successful long-term relationship. True. So I can't think money don't grow on trees and still think that I'm going to be rich and successful. Absolutely. I wow. can't think that all men cheat and think that I'm going to have a husband that I can trust to go about building a successful family. Genius, with. Well, once man. you adopt that mentality or that, that ideology, you have essentially resigned from a successful long-term relationship because it's impossible at that point. So here's the biggest thing with me, man. When I understood this, Ken, 
when I realized vetting the lady that I speak to, the woman, because I told you I'm, become, I'm really becoming more intentional. The conversations is all based on what is your mindset around this? We started talking big. I, can't, I reference this in every show. That's how bothered I am about this shit. We had a panel of men and a panel of women, and we talked about divorce. And it was almost exposed to me the difference in the philosophy of how men see divorce and how women see divorce. Because Ken is crazy. The men on here were all anti-divorce, and the women were all, eh, it depends. Now, that to me really, really, really bothered me. Because I'm not saying that even if you anti-divorce, things won't happen where it might happen. But I want to know that if I'm riding with you, that's not even a thought. Like the thought, that's not a thought in your mind as a solution or an option. We're going to think about everything else to go about making sure that we're going to make sure this thing lasts and we could take this to the death, do us part. But I noticed that. And I want fellas to really do that too, because I I have I do have an aspect of fear as it relates to having a relationship and commitment. I'm gonna be honest. Okay. But fair. a bit of that fear is I that my person too. is not as bought in as me. Right. Like they're not as dedicated to this thing as me. Mm. Like I literally the brother was talking about when his wife gets crazy, the first thing she starts doing is threatening divorce. That's like a problem. So see, so that's the thing when it comes down to it. It's like that mindset and your belief system. I think that's one of the biggest things that you have to vet, especially men, women, my guys. Like you got to figure out how to ask the questions to, for them to expose their mindset to really see if this is somebody you really want to get in bed with, build a family with, build a legacy with, and get in business with right. for the rest of your life. But I just had to vent on that because this shit is all I can stuff. tell you, you upset about yeah, that you know, one. I let him go. Yeah. And let's just let him <laughs> go. <laughs> No, so I, like, Ken, I like to let him go. Yo, Ken has been going in. So this is what I'm going to do. First, I'm going to give a shout out to Juanita Wall. Shout out to you for joining the membership. We appreciate you. I'm going to drop that link in the bio and I'm going to drop that link in the chat in a second. And shout out to the most the most active non-member that we have, TP. <laughs> Tia, what's up, Tia? Make the long term. We talk about long term relationships. Tia, join us long term. But Tia P says, Coach Ken dropping gems. Ken, what's the name of your book? Um, I have eight books. Um, well, what's the one that you were referring to earlier? Is oh, it the Just Ask? No, it's called, no, no, yeah, the Just Ask. That's the ebook. If you go to my website, you can get that. It's just Ask 50 Questions to Know if He's the One. Um, but I I updated it. Now it's 250 questions. See, that's the thing, Ken. You can't be dropping resources without giving us the links. Oh, because we got to get, listen, the people, they want us, they always want a discount. This are our people. We got to take care of them. <laughs> but I thought we was going to do that for the night. We, we okay, okay. Oh, okay, whoa, 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 Hold tight, hold tight, hold tight. Matter of fact, how about this, y'all? We getting, it, the chat getting up there. Can we, can we release it at 500? Would you want to release it to them at 500 people? What you think? I mean, once we get to 500 people, I, I think we can do that. And guys, I want y'all this thing. We highlight. I'm if y'all see the production is improving. We highlighting the members. We highlighting the super chats. We highlighting your comments. Yo, put your profile picture up. Like we want it to look live. Like we, it's a lot of people gonna be viewing this. Update your profile picture. Put it up. Shout out to Pauline and Tia for having theirs. But we want everybody to look nice and beautiful. Make this thing sexy. Stop yeah. playing. Stop playing. They nice in here, y'all. Real quick, we got all this technology. And stuff. Yes, I'm gonna let I'm gonna <laughs> let I'm gonna let Tyshawn get it get it back popping. But real quick, I want y'all to do a favor because we got close to 500 people in the room. I'm getting ready to drop. Ken Canyon's IG. Let's try to get him, guys. Only let's get 25%. Let's get him 100, 125 new followers on his Instagram tonight, guys. I want y'all to flood easy. his Instagram page. We only need 125 and go ahead and hit that follow button because Ken. You really dropping that game, man. So let's get it rolling. So where we at with this? No, my, right. We we talking about some negative mindsets that you see, and you said a couple of them. You talked about people are accepting the all men cheat. Right. People are accepting the, you know, I hear the men, and I even hear the men ain't shit. I hear that one too, but let's talk about what men say. Let's, I, that's what I want to, we, we on the same page, Ken. Yeah, what have on. men accepted that they should not be accepting or adopting uh, have a good relationship? First thing men say, she for the streets, you know? And, 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 and what they do is they use that as a blanket statement because they're afraid. Mm. Many men are afraid to love. I mean, you said it. You yeah. said you said you a manly man. All right, you that dude, both of y'all. But you, but you said I, I'm afraid. I, I'm fearful 
of commitment because of whatever reason. Maybe she's not all in like me. Maybe something might happen because it's a, it's a risk for a man. It's a risk. And so when his woman is a representation of him, if she's not all in, if she in the streets, if she what happened, it's reflective of who he is in his mind. Yep. Okay. Now that's not necessarily factual, but it is what men think. Yeah. Now, and so they say women, men are for the streets. Uh, women are emasculators. Women don't listen. Women's got masculine energy. Okay. I hear that too. Right. They're like, they don't listen to no damn body. They just want to blah, 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 want to be combative. So you hear it on both sides. I see as a relationship coach, I get it on both sides. And what I always say is true and it's false. All of it's true if you believe it. So mm. now think about what I just said. Mm. It's true if you believe that. Because you've told yourself, you've accepted this belief system. Men, you've accepted that belief system. It's true. That's the part that's true. The false part is, is that every woman is, every woman is not for the streets. Right. Every woman is not combative. There are many women that walk in their feminine energy. There are many men who don't cheat, who are about their business, that w- they will profess their love. They will protect you and they will provide for you. But if you believe that, there is a thing called resistance, right? And I teach the law of attraction and manifestation. That's how I I teach my people how to manifest relationship. That's how I manifested this TV show that I'm on. By the way, y'all, if you watch, I come on at at nine o'clock on MTV, watch the show. It's called Unfaithful Caught in the Act. We just had an episode last year. Yeah, y'all check it out. MTV, so somebody, somebody, baby. A couple of people that already said they like you as a coach on that show. Okay. Yeah, Appreciate some people already mentioned y'all. that. So yeah. Um, and what I will say is, is that these mindsets that people have, right? Yeah. If you believe it and you don't want to change it, then you know what? You will perpetuate it. You will continue. And you will never, because what I was going to say was I teach the law of attraction and manifestation. You you cannot, this is spiritual and this is science. Listen to me carefully. You cannot have the energy, you, you cannot solve a problem with the same energy that created the problem. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. You cannot solve a problem with the same mindset. So what it, what that is called is resistance. So you say, I want a relationship, but all men cheat. Well, that's resistance. You cannot attract the man of your dreams because the man of your dreams won't be able to come to you because of the resistance, mm. right? And so your job is to alleviate the resistance. Mm. And so what happens is part of changing the mindset, everything is energy. Thoughts are energy. Feelings are energy. Everything is energy. Energy is neither created nor destroyed. It's transferred from person to person. And what I always say is, you ever been around a person? Yeah, you ever been around a person that say, hey, they vibe. I don't like it. Like yes. Somebody hell yeah. you sense it immediately. Hell, hell yeah. yeah. If that's their energy, but they've been around somebody, like I like them. I like them. Yeah, yeah. It's the yeah. fast. The, the yeah. reason why I come back here is because our energy is synergy. It is. You like my energy. I like your energy, right? So we gravitate towards each other. It's because I've alleviated the resistance. If I came in and said, man. Man, the party, you know, if I was here, <laughs> you know, right, right, right. I'm like, man, wiggle, 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 wiggle. Ain't doing nothing. you know, you know that energy. Yeah. You would be like, man, I don't want, I don't want to mess with him. We right. do that. We right. do that. Right. Right. Yeah, right. But when the energy is, let's create something together. Let's let's touch lives. Let's build. Let's build. That energy is it's magnetic to you. And so what what you've done is alleviate resistance. The, the, you know what the resistance would be? Yeah. This ain't gonna work. You don't even think like that. I, I really like that you talk about manifestation because I, I'm a believer in manifestation. I I'm am, a believer I'm in absolutely. affirmations. This was a few years ago. Tyshawn can tell you this because a few people laughed at me, but this was about. Oh three, my God. They were laughing at me. So, you know, I experienced, you know, it was about four years ago. I experienced, the a, about to go on fire, I experienced a breakup. You know what I'm saying? It, it, was, it was not good. Okay. It was not good. I was, Did you love her? No. Okay. I didn't. Okay. The problem, the reason why I was not good, because one, I was in a relationship with no intention, no vision, no plan. And she was a good woman. Okay. So over time, I'm I'm sure it kind of wore on her and she began to just poke at me. 
You know what I'm saying? Like over time, it got it got it got really bad to where we ended the relationship. Okay. Now I was very upset, even though I wasn't in love with this woman, and I knew I was wasting this woman's time. I was still pissed. Okay. I don't know if it was the competitive nature. I don't know if it was my sure. ego, it was yeah. pride, but I was all pissed. of the above. Exactly. So it came to a point to where I had a pretty toxic six months after that because my remedy for it was smash everything. We that was a remedy. We don't heal, we hope. We don't heal, we, we hope. Right. Early, that yeah. was my remedy for it. Right. And it got to the point to where <laughs> I was like, I was losing it. Like I was I was going off the deep end. Like Tasha, I know I was going insane. Dark. I became was really you dark. Dark like that? He, no, he was going dark. He was going dark, 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 dark. dark, dark. I, that's a whole episode, Ken. I was doing shit that I'm excusing my language. I was doing stuff that you probably couldn't even imagine me doing. Okay. Yeah. I can imagine. Okay. It was dark. <laughs> I can imagine. And I end up so Tarshawn advised me, he's my boy. He advised me that I needed to start because I because the only thing I was uh, consuming was all dark stuff. Okay, right. How to how to narcissistic, very <laughs> toxic, how to do this with women, how to do that, <laughs> just how to just how to get to the finish line. Right. And Tyshawn was like, bro, like he's like, bro, you're compulsive. He was like, you get you you're zero or a hundred. He was like, because you go so far in like that, because if I read a book about from a pimp, I try to become a pimp. <laughs> no, I, he doesn't no, just take the context no, yeah. out. I go crazy. Yeah. So, I, so, so, I, wow. so, yeah, that's how I, I just am. So, okay, Tyshawn okay, was like, "Look, okay. put yourself in front of, uh, put other books that are more, uh, more for a mature, well-rounded, you know, superior man." And that's when I started wow. doing it. And wow. I came across this book, "Models" by Mark Manson. And of course, I'm reading I this like book, Mark, and it, it, Mark Manson is so great. Like Y'all got Manson. and check out the I library like in Manson, the description. Man. Mark Manson, we got his, we got that book in there specific called Models. I think every man should read it. And what I did was I was reading that book and I said, you know what? I'm in because I want to get healthier with women, I'm gonna incorporate women into my affirmations. So I literally put on my affirmations. <laughs> I will attract, I put this in there too, and have sex with beautiful women who care about me for me. <laughs> And I showed Tyshawn that you. Oh my God, Tyshawn! What did went, he say? He said everything. He yeah. was going. He went in on me a little bit. I can believe it. That's some uh, shit. Like when I heard that, that's what you just want to bully somebody like that. Yeah, like, yeah. like you just want to put their head in the toilet, give them a swirly or something. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? Yo, I was getting zoned out so bad for that. And but this oh, is the thing. This the thing, though. Can't can, no joke though. And I did this affirmation. I did these my group of affirmations every single day. And when I tell you. That because I was forced to read it, it really charted to change my perception. So all of a sudden, I just wasn't going for any woman. I was literally only looking for beautiful women who cared about me. So it, it started to train my mind to move in a certain way and to seek in a certain way. And it got it, it still was the sex part was in there. So then I took out the sex part. And I was like, you know what? Let me do this without sex. So then I went celibate. For six months and i would still attract these very beautiful women who would love me and care and all of my insecurities uh started to fade away because it started to make me be more motivated to become a better man so mm -hmm. i took mark manson's book i started reading away of the superior man by david dita i started checking out jordan peterson because i want to get the reality of things i started looking at king uh king warrior magician lover i started only consuming things that would make me better as a man and more attractive internally because that's that's where the issue was. It was internal. So the reason I so the reason I give you that because I'm a firm believer in how manifestation yeah. can reshape the way you even think about yourself and also the way you perceive others. So I no longer have that manifestation be, or that affirmation because I don't have that issue. But I tell men now that's having that issue. I'm like, look, you having women problems, you having confidence problems, you having getting over a breakup in a healthy way. I tell them it's in secret. I'm going to ask you a question. Let me know. Put that camera hold on, wait, hold on, wait. Quick, quick. quick wait, wait. Put that is this, camera Is this relevant? On me. <laughs> hold on, wait. Put that camera, the camera. On we got a We got a super chat. We're going to hit the super oh, chat okay, right now. Go after ahead and do the super chat. Hit, hit the super chat. I'm going to hit this super chat real I quick. Add, Ryan, Ryan, you know what? I need to coach his ass. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. I'm looking at him like, yo, I need to coach his ass, man. Listen. No, I'm good. I'm good. You know what? No. I always need coaching. No, no, no. I always need coaching. No, I always need coaching. No, no, I, always need coaching. I, got, I just got one question. I know we're about to do the super chat. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, super chat, then, then, then the question. Can I ask a question? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. This is fast. This is fast. fast. Okay. All right, watch this. Here you go. Listen, want to know all the three zodiac signs and also 
Myers Briggs personality types. If you know, I don't know the damn Myers Briggs, but you can get the, you can get the zodiac signs. Ryan, you can start with you. So Will my zodiac, I'm a Sagittarius. So my birthday, I actually was born on November, no November twenty or Thanksgiving, November twenty fourth, nineteen eighty eight. I'm a Sagittarius. What about you, Ken? Um, Pisces. Um, and also, um, far as uh, uh, I don't you do the Myers Briggs. I do. There's a self profile. I'm like a, I'm the socializer slash director. Um, so I don't know what that is in Myers Briggs though. Um, socializer, the person who likes though to control, like to be social, but I also like to, you know, be a leader, you know, kind of control stuff too. Okay. And I'm an Aquarius, whatever that means to y'all. Yeah, Aquarius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, yeah, really, sign. really great, great super chat. We got another one, and then I'm then we're gonna go to Ken. Shout out to Shanae Randall. Yo, we love you, Shanae. Thank you so much. And shout out to TP once again. Shout, oh, TP, shout out to me. Shout out to Ryan for sharing his manifestation story. Yes, TP, appreciate you. Now let's go to your question, Ken. What What's you got? Up, Ken? What you got? So, Ryan, you're 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 an intellectual guy. You're smart as hell. Right. right thank I you. mean, you, thank you, 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 both of y'all are. <laughs> do you want to be in love? Oh shit. Yes, I do. I don't, I, I'm I do. about to coach this man live on set, y'all. Let's get in his ass, Ken. I, I do, I do want to be in love, yeah. But the things you're doing is contrary to love. So you know how to manifest. But I noticed you didn't say somebody I can love. You and you and you never said in your affirmation, you said who would love me. Yeah. Who would love uh, love me that I could have sex with? That manifested. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah. But you never said I want to be in love. Somebody that will love me unconditionally that I could love unconditionally. Mm. Why is that? Because <laughs> damn, the level of sacrifice, I just don't want to accept it. I don't want to accept it. Okay. So you believe that being in love causes you to be a certain way. That, yes. To be a certain way that you're unwilling to be. Right now, yes. Uh, have you ever been in love before? Truly in love? No. And that's why. And that's why. Because... If you've ever been in love, truly in love, and somebody that you love the same way they love you, that energy is not a sacrifice. Mm. It's almost like you wanting to come do this podcast. I sat here with you before we started. And I'm like, I'm looking at you. I observe everything, whether you know it or not. <laughs> I mean, you're excited about this. Yeah. You're excited about building. You just never met somebody that you can build with. Mm -hmm. You met him. You can build him. That's yeah. why you're excited every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There is somebody out there you can build with. Somebody out there that wants to love you. But you got to give yourself permission to love. Damn. That's it. Damn, can't read my palm neck. Shit, this is going <laughs> crazy, man. Right uh, I'm mean, trying to get now get together. <laughs> hey, he about to invoice your ass after that for that one. <laughs> hey, 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 he about to invoice no, your ass no, after that. I just see it. I see it. He intellectually, intellectually, he 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 knows what he wants. Yeah. But emotionally, he's scared. Mm. He's scared for whatever reason. I agree with that. He's just, he's scared for it may not work out. They may interfere. They may cause me to get off track. All of the things that scare him is the story that he tells himself. Just like everybody listening to me, you telling yourself a story, and this story is the thing that prevents you from getting the thing that you really <laughs> truly want. That's why I ask him, have you, have you ever been in love? And if you've been in love, you know what? The truth is, you'll have the same level of excitement that you do for this. Probably even greater. Ooh. <sighs> All I know challenge. is this. Here we go. That's a challenge. Ken, let me tell you something. Pause real quick because we're about to bless the chat real quick multiple times. But I want to just go ahead. We're going to drop the link in there for y'all right now for the people that I see here. Because I want to I'm gonna make sure y'all understand the beauty that y'all about to be blessed with towards the end of this month because we have partnered. Shout out to 515. We announcing it. Over 500 in the chat, baby. Hardly Initiated has partnered with this brilliant coach here on set and we are very strategic with our partnerships. Y'all hear the game he's spitting. This is the only reason we would allow him or bring him to our audience in the way that we're about to because King Canyon is doing a challenge. I'm doing a challenge. For you guys at the end of this month and it's a three-day challenge yes. addressing and helping the people that we're talking to right now. And we are doing something special solely for the hardly initiated audience. Yes. 
We're going to get back to the conversation. Stay patient. But Ken, can you please give the people a brief and brilliant explanation about sure. what this is, who and who this is for? And Ryan's going to drop the link and we're going to give y'all special access to this joint. So, y'all, when I, I'm on this show called Unfaithful Caught in the Act um, on MTV. And, and having done the show, I filmed 20 episodes and I realized there are a lot of people out there who um, are stuck. So I created a challenge called Unfaithful to Unstuck, The Art of Letting Go. Mm. And many people need to let go uh, past relationships. They need to let go past attachments, unhealthy attachments. They need to let go the past hurt. They need to let go some people and they need to, maybe it, maybe it was infidelity. Maybe it was just you just broke up. Maybe, maybe it's somebody that hurt you and that you can't seem to move forward and walk into the love that you know you desire that God wants you to have. Yeah. And so I created this three day challenge to walk people through this process, because like I told you all er earlier, there are people out there who've never got training on coaching. You don't know how to communicate and you want to be in a relationship. Then they say communication is number one thing, but you don't know how to communicate. Mm. Right. Well, that's right. a, I mean, that, 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 it that doesn't make sense on, sense on any level. And so some of you out there, you want to move forward. You want to have that relationship, but you don't know how. So I created this challenge um, and I partnered with them just because of y'all energy. And y'all energy. I normally have one, 200 people on my challenges. All right. I wanted y'all to bring y'all people in. And I want, there are people out there, men included, men included. Y'all, they're getting healed. It's not just a woman thing. It's not. That's it's a not. Fact. That's a it's fact. not. Men are hurting too. So this art of letting go. Um, I mean, this unfaithful to unstuck is is the challenge. It's the 26th, 27th, and 28th. Yep. We're meeting. Um, it's going to be an hour and a half each day uh, where you get me and you get my team. It's me and my other coach, and we we go in. Yes. And and if you want VIP, you get VIP. Uh, you can get in for an hour before, and you can ask me anything about your relationship. Yes. Yeah, I advise anybody to do that. What we want to do, we want to try to get 50 people solely from the Heartland Initiated audience to go ahead and join this challenge with us because uh, we know Ken is going to take great care of y'all. That's the deal. Yeah. Real quick, shout out to Yali. Yali, what we consume is so important. This is why conversations like this are going to help people have stronger and healthy relationships. Absolutely, Yali, we appreciate you. And shout out to the wifey. She says, sometimes we create our own confinement. It's our choice oh, to I'm grow just... or stay still. Do what's best for you now. And if you change your mind, that's fine. So ladies and gents, Ken is doing this challenge. We trust. I mean, first off, y'all long, it's over 500 people in the room. So somebody. But I got to tell you what value. I'm going to do for y'all, though. What are we going to do? Let us know. Let hold me on, tell you what hold I'm going to do for y'all. Here's what I'm going to do for y'all. I'm dropping the link. All right. What I'm, my challenges are normally $97, right? They yes. normally $97, right? Um, and then VIP is normally $297. That's just, we always have, because because what we do, the value is value. amazing. You get returned. But, but for y'all audience, I'm going to do it for half that. I think it's $47 or something. And all they got to do when you go to the order form is put heal in. The, the code heal, H-E-A-L. Just for y'all. Yeah, that, was, that was a real surprise right there. Damn! 50% off of the audience. Uh, uh, said audience. It's heal. It's heal. Type like in that. heal. And even my audience can't get that. I don't even do it to my own audience. That's for us, man. Just for Harley Initiated. Just for you all. Um, that's how we hit the gym know, so we can strong on the guests. <laughs> just for y'all. And hey, listen, listen. That's Guys, you talking about having the most important part of your life which is the relationships, the family, the love that affects literally all areas of your life. 50% off. Y'all go ahead and jump on that. That's, that's nothing. And we're not going to put nobody in front of you. We don't trust. Let's get back to the conversation though, because I want to go ahead and make sure they keep getting this healing here in this conversation. How many we got in there? We got over 500 people in the chat right now. We got Ooh. 519 people in here watching. But, uh, but, but, but here. This, this, this is a strong 500, though. It's a strong, it's a strong 500. If you got, I don't care. You got 500. This Even if there was a weak 500. <laughs> <laughs> now, I want to I ask you this, Ken. Yes. And this for me here, because I be getting, listen, I be getting advice for me sometimes. Yeah, right, we're going to get back to y'all later. This for me, Ken. Okay. Is it a red flag for me if I'm dating a woman 
and she has no other people in her life with healthy romantic relationships in her circle is that something that should be concerning to me absolutely and here's why i say that you know and y'all read all the self-help books i've probably read thousand i've read at least two thousand one of the things and i, I forgot who said it they say you're the sum result of the five people you hang around mm. all right they say if you want to look at you know if you got four four broke people you hang around you the fifth one Mm. Okay. Um, you are the sum of the people you allow their energy in your circle. So if I'm allowing a certain kind of energy, now there, there, there's, there's a silver lining to this too. Um, I would say there are people out there who want to change, who yeah. want to be in a different circle, but they don't know how. They don't know how. That is why the internet is good. But this part of it is good. Now you can get in a circle like the Harley Initiated Circle. You can get around people like, I don't have to know you, but I feel like I know you because I watch you. Right. Because that energy is permeating through, through these cameras. They feel this energy. They do. And so, yes. So, but the, but, but the one thing I will say is it would be concerning to me because what are they taking in? Is it the same for a woman evaluating a man? Absolutely. So here's the thing, because most, most men hang with other single men. But 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 just like you, just like you, you are a man, and I and I hear it today. I've always known it, but I know deeper. You're like you're telling him, you need to be a well-rounded man. You need to be because you are single does not mean that you are not progressive, that you are not ambitious. You're not you're not the kind of man that I don't want to be around because it's marital status has nothing to do with it. Okay, because people always say you hang around with single guys or whatever. Man, it's not just I, I I get what they mean by that, who got the same goals, but I'm talking about character. If he can be single, but he ain't gonna be screwing a lot of people, he can be single. But listen, at the end of the day, it's his character. Your character says, you know what? I want you to grow to be a well-minded man. What you reading? What you mm. doing? What what did he say? I, or he said, oh, I want to level up. Right. That's the man who wants to grow. That's the kind of man I want to be around. Y'all single, I'm married. That's true. All right. The reason why I'm around y'all, not because, not because you're not single, but because you're the type of men who want to grow. Mm, right. That's why I hang around you. Yeah. So you know, I'm yes. not gonna lie. This this show has brought us around some tremendous men. Oh yeah, and absolutely, and we've always and we've always been and ladies. Yes, we've Both. always been around men who are always tremendous and excelling in the area of business. But this has especially brought us around men who are excellent and and just excelling in the area of life and family, which has been extremely special. Mm. I remember, man. I'm gonna be honest. I remember I did an episode. I'm not even the same person I was six, eight months ago. I, I'm thinking about like um, sometime last year, I think probably in my October, we did an episode. And on the episode live, I literally said, I have never met a man who has not cheated on his wife. I said that live on an episode. And today, uh, I mean, if, if I can't even count on one hand or even two hands, the amount of men that now I know that have not cheated right. or, or claim they have not cheated. <laughs> but here's what I'll say. Yeah. The character and the integrity of these men are all consistent where I can believe it. So that's a very, and, I, and, and the people that I have been around over these last six to eight months is a big reason on why now my vision of me building a family, getting mm -hmm. a lady and all these things, mm -hmm have now sped up and I really see myself being a lot more intentional in these areas because of that. So I can even, I see how that's taking a toll on me. So I 100% can see how that affects somebody else. So if a, if a woman doesn't necessarily have immediate access or a man does not have immediate access to this with the people in her environment, what do you suggest her do? Find them. They're on the, listen, this, that's the good part of social media. Yo, yo, people, reached out to me and I, I'm a young dude reached out to me recently and I'm mentoring him because I'm mentoring him because of the way he approached me. Listen, I don't have a lot of time. Y'all know this. I'm busy as hell. Right. I mean, right. my, my business is going through the roof, but I told God this, this, this is where we get deep. 
I told God, I said, God, first, let me tell you this. I need y'all to hear this. I don't think I've ever told this story. Mm. See, back in the day, I heard a lot of people, right? Yeah. And and I don't feel good about it. And I asked God, I said, I want to I want to be an honorable man. I want to be a good man. So when I decided that when my purpose became more important than pussy, mm. then I decided that I'm going to change. And let me tell you what, let me let me long story short, let me just tell you this much. When I changed and I made my wife my main person that I was going to be with, and I was dating several of women during that time. I told God, I said, I am going to consecrate my marriage. I didn't have sex with my wife. We'd already had sex a million times in the car and everywhere else. But I told her, I'm not going to have sex for one solid year until we get married. You know why? I said, so I said, this is my pledge to God. All the stuff I've done that I am going to be a man of honor. Mm. And God has honored me with this. I can't stand before them and say I'm a man of honor. If somebody out there saying, yeah, this nigga been in my DM. Facts. But that ain't it. Nobody going to say that. <laughs> no one. Because that ain't me. Listen, you might not like me, but I am a man of integrity. And so when I did that, my own wife used to be like, she thought I was cheating. She was like, at first, then she was like, what, 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 what is wrong? We've been having sex. I said, I said, listen, at some point, I'm going to be a man of honor. Well, that set the stage for I don't have to cheat. Yeah. I don't have to. And so when people say they can't do something, here's what I say. When people say they can't. So I'll give you this one example, and we can move back to, to the chat, the super chat. But when people say they can't, like, uh, like I, y'all, many of y'all know, don't know, I was on the show The Biggest Loser. I used to weigh 430 pounds. I've lost 170 pounds over 10 years, and I've kept it off. Congratulations. Wait, 430 pounds. Yes. Can you look great? And, uh, yeah, thank you, man. That's insane. And so when people, so, I, so when I got off the show, uh, when I got off the show, I told God I would help people um, in that area. That I've always been in personal development, but the, the, the vehicle might change. Right. Um, but then um, I told him I would never turn people away because of money. And then people would sit at me in front of me and say, I just can't do it. I can't do it. You know what I said? I said, okay. I said, well, let me ask you a question. If your child, if your child was about to die in three months and the doctor said to you, I need you, you have to lose 40 pounds, 40 pounds in three months or your kid is going to die. I said, could you do it? They said, yeah, yeah, I can do it. I said, well, then the question is you can't, is you won't. Mm. You won't. You, if you don't have a big enough why, you ain't going to do it. And listen, I always tell people, if your why is big enough, the how becomes irrelevant. But see, that's another thing. I don't know if people have a big why for the love and family. And you know, they don't. Let, 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 let me tell you this too, because this, this goes back to my previous rant. When you think about the interview we had with Judge, she said for five years straight, she did not like her husband. And they stuck in there and they were stronger on the other side when they came out of it. Mm -hmm. I remember Michelle Obama, she did an interview. She said for 10 years straight, I think it was on that interview, she said she did not like Obama. But they stuck in there and on the other side, they were stronger. But see, I think... In those relationships, they had, it, it was like this, it was something greater that they were really sticking in there for. Mm -hmm. Like, it wasn't just, I'm not happy right now, I'm leaving. It was like, we're building this great thing. I mean, think about it. If he would have probably divorced Michelle, he probably would have never became president. Probably like, not. like, the whole legacy would oh, have completely right. changed. History would not be what it is today. True. So, the thing about it is, I don't know if most people even have anything greater than just wanting to feel good. They want somebody to feel good with. So when the feeling good is no longer there, they bounce instead of really having something great to even hold on for. I, I know. I remember I used to always say something like, you know, never stay in a relationship for just the kids. And I remember mm -hmm. we had Shannon 
he challenged us on that. He said, if, he, if you're not going to stay in there for the kids, what better reason than not for your kids and your legacy? And I thought about that. I thought about that because I'm, I'm not just for just being a happy and doing things for other people, but I could, I could respect that ideology to self-sacrifice for something greater because me and Ryan building, and it's not all the times, this is our second business together. And I have not been happy every day in business. I have had very down moments sure. where I just, I was lost. I didn't know, I don't know what the hell's going on. I'm, I'm even experiencing doubt. Me and Ryan might not be even on the best page, but at the end of the day, I, I'm cool with being here because I know why we're doing this. Yeah. But I don't know if most couples have that. What should a couple do if they're in that space? I got a book that we wrote about that. It's called The Canyon Culture. And I wrote about why. Creating a why in the relationship. Because you know what? Like Michelle and Barack didn't know what the why was. They didn't know what it was. They just knew it was something greater. And me and my wife almost divorced 15 years ago. We didn't know what our why was. We just felt like, we just said at the end of the day that, you know what? We came together and and we're going to persevere through this because, you know, through, the tri through all of the adversity, that's what helps us become. Think about what I just said. Adversity helps us to become. Mm. Becoming is what it's all about. Becoming the new man you're going to become. Becoming, like I was telling somebody the other day, I was telling somebody um, in a group that I have of men that we study, we talk about God and stuff. I said, God don't care about you reaching your goal. Mm. God cares about the man you become and the route to the goal. Wow. And so it's about us becoming. Michelle and, and Barack knew they were becoming someone. They were becoming a couple. My wife and I knew if we hung in there, we would be coming. I didn't, we didn't, I didn't know I'd be doing this. But now, look, look what happens when you stay. Yeah. And so every relationship doesn't, I won't, I don't tell every relationship to stay. Because some people are literally, literally uh, not in alignment with each other. And they do more, da more damage to the children to themselves if they do stay very toxic yeah it becomes toxic and when i see that i say let's stop poisoning each other but when it just don't feel good and i don't like you today because my wife don't always like me because i'm overbearing i'm loud i'm you know she don't like, she don't, she don't like me out of time but she loved me she said i'm glad that i stayed you mm -hmm. know and so I, I i always say this it's who we become until we become in the process, man. There are people out there listening right now. They want to take this journey, but they're scared. He's scared. Great guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's scared. I, I'm not going. I'm not going to deny that. I'm not going to. I mean, that. no, he said it. I'm not going. Great deny guy. That. He's scared. All right, <laughs> but the man he's becoming one day will love, and he will understand what Coach Kim said. The man he's becoming, that man who he's becoming is going to love a woman and she's gonna show him a different love that he hasn't seen before, that mm. he hasn't experienced before. And that love will transform him. Mm. Let me ask you this. Yes. Since we're talking about being affected, adopt the negative mindsets, you know, the energy you're around, so on and so forth. If you got some homies that's still in the game, mm -hmm. they in the game, they okay. casual. Sure. They in the game, they playing. You know the guys who in the game still play. Right, 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 right. We know them. Right. <laughs> we, all know. <laughs> we all know. We all know them, right? They even tell me, Coach, I ain't ready. Yeah. Right, right, right. Or ladies. You got ladies who are, you know, the, the 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 toxic ones who's consistently attracting those toxic men over and right. over. Yeah. The, the, if the, the, a woman, oh, okay. Okay. if okay. a woman or man mm -hmm. is looking to excel and find something, should they look to go as far as as creating separation between those people? Or is it possible to still get what you want with those being, those people being, having, you know, dear friendships right. in your life? How many broke people do you hang around? Man, that's a good question, Ken. That's a good question. If, I, if they broken, I'm hanging around them, they mentees. Yeah. 
They and trying man, to they trying to be unbroke. At this t- so point, so you're not hanging around them. Nah, you're mentoring them. Absolutely. The people we hang around with, they say we broke. Yeah, right. absolutely. We got, a, we got a whole business. We you know right, right, big right. channel. You so know what listen, I mean? so listen to what I just said. You ain't hanging around no broke people. Nah, no nah. Right. So that you just answered your own question. It is virtually impossible to hang around someone who has a different ideology that is going in a different direction from you. It is almost like I'm going to New York and you're going to LA. We cannot, we are diametrically opposed. We cannot be, our energies don't even mesh. Now they might still be your partner, but you ain't hanging around them. You know, yeah, I got friends that I distance myself from because simply because we don't even have much in common anymore. We are almost incompatible. What's up? That's my boy. I, you know, I see him. What's up, man? What you <laughs> right. up to? We give him love, but I ain't saying I'm gonna call you Monday. That's about it. Right? Yeah. So it is virtually impossible. But here's why it's impossible: those energies cannot coexist in the same space. Mm. That's what that is. Yo, Ooh. Ken, you you really killing it right now. So I've already seen at least I want to say at least four people, and Lano got to help me out on this. I want to say at least four people have joined the three day challenge. Good. So, yeah, I we really, need we need at least we, we need, need 20, more. We, now. No, no, no. We need twenty one. We need twenty one. We need twenty one. Twenty one. Can you do yeah, something? Fun? At least for it. Right, right, right. But I want to go ahead and, and do this real quick. Shout out to Bridget Oliver just joined the YouTube membership. We love that. And shout out. Oh, wow. Chastity J just sent over the super chat. Shout out to Chastity J. I, I want to say that's her first super chat. So, Chastity, we appreciate you. And, uh, guys, this is the thing. We are we just hit, I mean, Bridget, she made 100. So, we hit 100 members, members for tonight. And just remember this, guys. We, we, we solicit our members. We already spoke to about 50 of our members. Yeah. But as we grow and as we improve the, the business, the production, what we're able to bring to you, the the, art, the, the the guests and everything, the production, everything in between, we're going to allow our members to drive the direction of the channel. So one of the things that our members have been telling us is like, hey, y'all are really killing us with the amount of content for the past Six weeks, seven weeks, we've been doing about five episodes a week. Wow. We actually going to bring that down to three episodes a week. We're going to do, for the next few weeks, just going to try it. We're going to do one pre-recorded episode and two lives every week. Now, the reason that we're doing that is because our members are wanting more from this live. So we want to bring- live is dope, yeah, man. Yeah. Dope. yeah. We want to bring new yeah. segments. We want to bring Completed, more man. exciting oh, guests. We want to bring in <laughs> virtual guests. We want to bring you. We want to do call-ins. They want to do video-ins. Oh, it's going to get crazy, so y'all. It's about to get really in. crazy because we're going to actually have oh, y'all yeah. share y'all stories. Now, the thing about it, for us to be able to do that, you got to become a member for you to get that level of access to us and that level of input. And all my members, especially my first hundred, be patient with us because we got some very special things coming for you guys and only you guys. So, Tyshawn, what's good? She said, yeah, listen, we don't want y'all burnt out, boy. Let me tell you, this here, this energizes us. We ain't yeah. nowhere near burnt out, yeah. baby. Girl, we got energy to go all night, all right? But I want to take it in a different direction here, Ken. As a matter of fact, let's talk about, I think you talked about social media, right? A bit, but I want us to really get a holistic idea that I don't just want to leave social media. You did mention podcasts and you did mention just the echo chambers online of things that we're hearing yeah. that's potentially damaging us. I want to make sure that people are able to really like protect their minds as much as possible because it's a battle for your attention right now. That's really where people's minds, social media has a stronghold on our minds right now. So is there anything else? Do you see any other ways that social media is negatively affecting the way people think and see relationships outside of the, you know, those, um, you know, the, the potential podcasters, is, is it the, you know, the couple's goals or whatever the case is? Is it other ways that people are adopting these negative or toxic, toxic mindsets as it relates to relationships? Oh, man, it's, it's, yo, we're bombarded with it. We're, we're bombarded with it all the way, all the time. Now, social media is the gateway, the gateway drug. Yes, it is. It is the gateway drug because we're binging on it. 
we're consuming it at a, a massive pace. It's like crack on steroids, uh -huh. you know, but, but it's infecting way more people, you know? And so people, somebody asked me the other day, did you see my post? I was like, no, nah, I ain't see your post. I said, because I'm on social media only for what I'm doing. Yeah. I respond to people on my page. You know what? I'm posting content. I don't see it. I use it. So social media in that aspect is good. The problem is, is that we're no longer critical thinkers. Mm. We no longer research anything. We no longer say. So somebody can pick up a, a cell phone and espouse their opinion. And what will happen because they got a lot of followers, people will say that's gospel. That's true. They could just say anything. I mean, and I'm not saying that, you know, they don't have to be an expert or anything. You're not, not that you have to be. Right. But what I'm saying is, is we don't vet people. It ain't important to vet them if they agree with our opinion. Mm. So you ever notice this, this is called confirmation bias. I always look for people who have the same opinion that I do or that I want to adopt. Yes. Okay. Oh, this person right here, you know, is talking like I want them to talk. They're talking about women, um, red pill, blue pill. They're talking women ain't this and women ain't that. Right. I like that. So I'm going to consume all of that. Okay. What do we do? So because I got hurt by a woman, I got hurt by a woman. And now what do I do? I look for everything that talks about how negative women are to confirm <laughs> yeah. my bias. To validate yeah. what you believe. To, com to, to validate what I believe. And that's the problem. You want to know something? You don't want to know how I know what you're saying is true, man. If the Shade Room Hollywood Unlocked, one of the culture's pages post something, especially a high profile divorce takes place. Mm -hmm. Look at the comments, y'all. Oh. The first thing you'll see is, see, I knew it. See, here goes, I knew they wasn't going to make it. Yeah. Yep, see, that's why marriage don't work. Yeah. See, that's see, that's exactly why I ain't wiping up these. Yeah. And see, that's exactly. People are looking for reasons. And that confirmation bias, another term is cognitive bias, is what you do is you look for people who support the way you want to believe. Mm. And so I can find it out there. That's what that's where social media comes in. I can always find somebody to believe. I, I gotta do is type it in on, on, on YouTube. I can type it in. And I so we don't, we usually don't look for people who challenge our ideology right. yeah. and to help us really get a more well-rounded way of thinking, we do look and learn for validation. And that's not even learning if it's validation. It's literally, like you're saying, it's just confirming what we already want to believe, which is why the liberals going to always watch CNN right. and the Republicans going to always, always watch Fox because they don't even want to hear nothing that challenges how they think. Don't want to. And you know, funny thing about it is my friends used to say, well, why do you watch Fox News? Because you know, I always tell people I'm not I'm not a liberal, I'm not a conservative. I listen. I want to learn. I'm a thinker. I'm going to think and vote for who, because because I have some conservative values when it comes to money, you know, and then I have some liberal values when it comes to racial justice and that kind of thing. And so I'm looking for the best candidate, right? Yeah. And I said, they said, well, why are you listening to Fox? I said, I want to know what everybody thinks. I want to know what everybody thinks. I don't want to know just what MSNBC thinks yeah. or CNN. I'm not. And that's where a lot of people who listen to a podcast, like your podcast, yeah, I put up a post. They get a 30-second sound bite of something I said. Now, they're hurting. They want to believe that men are a piece of shit, right? Right, that's what they want. And then one of your members said, you don't like women? I would never. It's the dumbest thing I ever heard. Now, she listens to a 30 second flower box. Now I know that she's coming from a place of pain. Yeah. I know it because of the response. Now I told her go heal and keep scrolling. Now I could have. King gonna check in them comments. Y'all get crazy. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> if, if it's an intellectual conversation, I'm like, let's have it. We, we all, you don't have to agree with me. Yeah. I, I don't care about agreeing with me because I say some things that, that don't. Now, if you come for me, though, I'm going to hit you with the intellect, too. I'm going to break down stuff, you know, but I love those conversations. So let's talk about those women, too, because we've all met those women who you know that they've been through some things. Right. And they just got this wall up. Yes. They just do not want to be vulnerable. 
They got it up. It's tight. It's high. And, and, and talk about that. Like, talk about that, that vulnerability that, that they don't want to have, right? That, like, that lack of it. Can a relationship be successful with that wall up? Like that, uh, that somebody might have due to previous trauma coming in there. You know what I'm gonna do, right? I don't. Don't he have a wall up? <laughs> Yo, what? <laughs> <laughs> He's no. like, Ryan, the mascot for this <laughs> damn conversation right. tonight. You're right. <laughs> but wait a minute. Now, wait, avatar, wait, a wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a traumatized avatar tonight. No, no, no. Ryan's my guy, man. I'm just joking with him. But no, but listen. Wait, no, you got a wall. But that's a good question, though. Well, there is a wall. There yeah. is a wall. Yeah. Right? He has a wall up. You have a wall up. You said it. I'm fearful. Everybody's got a wall up. If you touch the hot stove, you don't want to go back. What happens is, is somebody in your life makes it okay for you to touch it and say it's not hot. It's not hot anymore. I've touched this. Is that, that's a good point. You said somebody in your life. Or somebody that comes in your life. Now, is that how it should be? Should it be, is it somebody else's responsibility to help that wall go down? Or should that wall be down before they arrive? Why would they have it down? If you've been, if you've been burned, when every time I go around a hot stove, I don't want to get near it because I know I'm gonna get. I, I feel like I might get burned. It is. So you look at. So you, you, let's reframe it. What you're saying is it's their responsibility. No, it's not their responsibility. It's the other person. Everybody's responsibility. We're responsible for ourselves right. to heal. However, if I'm authentic and I come to you and I say to you, you know what? I want to. Both of us, we've had situations go on. I want to come to you from an honest, authentic place. After we both come from an honest, authentic place, let's see what happens then. Mm. Nobody's responsibility. Every, only People's only responsibility is to be honest and authentic. That's it. And in our honesty and authenticity, I might find out that I don't like you. I might find out that I don't like you. Is it, you might not like me. Is it not their responsibility to also not be broken? before you, they meet you as well? Is no. that also not your responsibility? No, because here's the thing. You think everybody who gets in a relationship is healed? Dude, this is this, I teach this. The misnomer, Tyson, is, is, is the misnomer is you have to be all the way healed to be in a relationship. That's what you, they, that's what most people or that a lot is of people the, are That saying. is the biggest misnomer because healing is a lifelong, lifelong journey. You may right. be healed in one area, but you may not be healed in this area. And to think that you can't have a relationship that you're that you're because you're not healed is untrue. You you evolve as we grow. What did it, Michelle and Abrock, did they evolve? There was areas that weren't healed that got healed. Now, so now, now, now let's put it and uh, have an ambition for healing. I think that, that that's the truth. Now let's let's put healing because to say healed and not healed, I think is just crazy. Right. Let's put it on a spectrum. Okay. Okay, let's put it on a, on, on a spectrum because I think that's a little bit more accurate. I think you need to be at a certain level, though. That's fair. I don't think it... That's fair. There's a certain level of brokenness you that's shouldn't fair. be at when you're presenting yourself to someone else because now I think that's irresponsible to bring an abandoned house where somebody got to do a full rehab on your ass that's versus fair. somebody having to do some cosmetic fix-ups here and there in order to have a successful, yeah. beautiful home. And, you know, for the analogy there to be, you know, for you guys to be successful. So, so, so that's my thing. That's fair. That's a fair assessment. Okay. But, but, but even to fix them up, even a little bit of fixing, that's not all the way healed. You're still healing. You're still on your journey. I would agree with that. You're still on your journey, but I agree. I agree that don't give me an abandoned house. Okay, but if they give you an abandoned house, the truth of the matter is when you walk in that house, you know this house ain't for me. Think about that now. The way, how do you know? Because you've asked subconscious questions mm. and that unhealed, that abandoned house comes out. And you say, you know what? Truth is, no, nah, I'm gonna keep it moving. Mm. That's how you know. So so look, I, I don't want to cut you off, Ken, but you because you're going crazy right now. But the chat, first of all, we Ty. We have to get a moderator. I cannot keep up with the polls, the chats. They're just going to <laughs> oh, insane. Yeah. Oh, God. It's Yo, 
I don't even know how y'all do this without it, a moderator, yeah, man. No, no, no. We it's got good. to. We it's got way to. too we crazy. To. Now, so look, I'm going to drop Ken's Instagram. Don't forget our goal for the following for Ken is 125. Our goal for the membership, we always want to at least get 10 members tonight. And our goal for the three-day. Three-day challenge. Just unstuck challenge the goal for that is to get 25 people i'm pretty sure we got about 10 people right now like it's really going crazy so we got to get people on that challenge though because yeah we- there are somebody out there who really want to get healed there's somebody out there who's stuck you had a bad relationship and you don't know how to move forward but you want to love again let me guide you let me show y'all i am what i say i am i am what you see i i'm a man that loves god but i might cuss the next sentence i am smart as shit i am <laughs> I've helped so many people get out of this place, get in great relationships, get married. I just, I wish I could show you pictures of, uh, of a couple that came to me six months ago. Hey, they, they want to break up, right? I said, give me six months. Well, six months, two weeks, three weeks ago, I was at there where they wanted me to officiate. I ain't officiating no wedding, but I got other people that are getting married in relationships. And I sat there in my car, y'all. And tears literally went down my face and I said, God, you use me? Mm. You use me to do this? All right, man, send me the link. Me and Ryan going to get in the VIP. No, 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 <laughs> me, no, no, Ryan, gonna, me and Ryan no, no, getting no, no. the VIP We're going we, we, we to be present on the challenge. Absolutely. Just absolutely. To, you know, now this absolutely. thing, we're not presenting because we're going to leave that to the expert, but we're going to be there present. We're going to be there representing because we want to make sure yeah, that we, we actually, you know, yeah. every, you know, we got problems too. <laughs> Just being real, we got problems. We all too. do. We all do. We all, we all do. do. But I we wanted to do, because man. speaking speaking of people, you know, I want you to do a teaser because speaking of people who are looking to be healed, we had a young lady. She dropped a super chat earlier, but somehow the question didn't get in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and take care of her. Okay. Chastity J. She says, "My question for Coach K. I like that, Coach. Coach K. K. I like that, Coach K. Coach K. Winner. K. Coach K. The this Hall is, of Famer. This is dope. This has some <laughs> spirituality to it. God has released me to start dating again after healing and." doing my work with the exclamation point by the way so you know it's real coach k what type of environments places should i go meet quality men so really it's a question for the men and the women where should if you want to meet quality women where the men should go and if a women the women want to meet quality men where should they go ken that's Mm. a real good question right there all right so here's the thing where you are is where you are now watch what I'm about to tell you. He's real Socratic with it. Real yeah, Socratic. Yeah, yeah. It's where, <laughs> because where she is right now, her energy is totally different. Mm. So you ain't going to have no bust ass dudes approaching her. And if they do approach her, they can't stay in that energy long. Mm-hmm. So what I tell people is, I said, I said, go out to a restaurant by yourself if you have to. I let your energy be, but let your energy be some. Go to bookstores. I say go. I say go to events. If you go to, and what's going to happen is people think, why should I go by myself? I said number one, you have to act as if. Acting as if means if if I were in a relationship, what would I do? Would I go to the game by myself? Okay. Would I go out to dinner with the person? Act as if you're in a relationship already, and then you can attract the relationship you want. It's a powerful concept, y'all. No, I, I like that because if you were to move mm. like you in a relationship with yourself, essentially, right, you're going to take care of yourself. You're going to put yourself in position to get shows. Yes. Really, what it comes down and to, because because that energy, her energy is going to be so powerful. Because she said, "I did the work. I'm here. God's released me." Yeah. So now, when they come, like in my communication class, get this, y'all. <laughs> Anyway, let me tell you. I'm just <laughs> so I got a communication like crazy, crazy, crazy as hell. Man. He is. I Yo. teach. I teach. I teach women how to communicate with men. Right. Yeah. So one of the questions came up. Coach, a man won't sex with me, and I got offended. I said, Well, why did you get offended? She says, Because I, you know, I said, men, men are wired. We're, we're loaded with testosterone because we want to have sex with you. You shouldn't see that as disrespectful. I said, But you need to learn how to communicate with him in a way that he understands. You don't lose your feminine energy. Now he says, Wow, you're different. I said, here's what you tell him. Watch this communication. I said, you know, wow. I said, the truth is I am flattered that you'd love to be with me physically. Mm-hmm. You know what? And I know that physical connection would be great if we ever got to that point. But the truth is I want to connect with you mentally and emotionally to see if we are in alignment with each other. And if we are in alignment with each other, because that's what's important to me right now, I think that physical, that physical connection will come and I think it'll be great. Now, listen to what I just told him. You ain't getting no pussy. 
<laughs> I just told you in a and I just told you in an eloquent way, you ain't getting no pussy, right? You did. You but, did. But now the man says, wow. She has a standard. She's respectful. He might move on, but he's going to respect her. He's going to respect her. Yeah. Because listen, y'all, at the end of the day, Ryan just told you if the sex ain't in there, I'm out. Yeah. Well, then he's not the kind of guy you want to meet anyway, even though he's a wonderful guy, good looking fellow. No, he, no, I get it. You, yeah. You're right. And I think most men will be honest with that and they're they going to be out. Yeah. And so that's all I'm saying. That's and know what? And I want to say this to women, women too. Like, for the woman specific, well, one, for the men, if a woman, she says she doesn't want to do that, no reason to be upset with the woman. You just got to keep moving. You go stiff up another tree, right? And for the women, and for the well, women, if you're a real savage, no you reason. put it to the test. <laughs> right? Or you put it to the test, right? Oh, y'all, can my, she y'all come to my class, please. <laughs> yeah. There's some savages out here. It, it is, I can it show is. you how to fight that war in yeah. a different way. And for the women, it's <laughs> no reason to feel guilt or shame because a man walks away because you don't want to have sex. Because right. I see that all the time for women. They're like, well, if we shouldn't be out having sex, why do y'all stop messing with us? Or why do y'all leave us if we if we don't want to put out? And the thing put out. And the thing is, <laughs> the thing is, ladies, that's because that's not the man you should be dealing with. That's not him. So don't be yeah. upset and don't be if frustrated he, because of that. Just know because, that. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm just going to say this, man. I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, do you say this? The man for you that is in alignment with you, he may want to have sex with you and he may ask you for sex, but he he is willing to wait to wait somewhat because you're worth that but you got to believe you're worth that you know it's it's so interesting when you when people date people and they get in these relationships and there tends to be a difference in values right or a difference in what what each other wants the other person can literally feel like they're doing something wrong based on their values Mm -hmm. they're doing something wrong based on what they like or what they believe if that person feels differently and wants something different. And that's, that's, that's something that's, it's very dangerous. I remember even for myself, a good example, I had one relationship. It was one young lady I dated right after college. And it was, was, she was like, it was a, it was a terrible sacrificial relationship because (laughs) I was, let me, let me tell you why I I was such a savage all through college. Okay. I just said, all through, I was such a savage. All through, I com- I committed and vowed not to be in a relationship. I'm going to just have my fun. Okay. And there was this one young lady I particularly hurt the most. She kind of told me exactly how she felt. It was around this time when she like vented to me. I felt, I really felt horrible for hurting this young lady. So this next young lady I dated, I just automatically made my girlfriend. Like I really liked her. I said, you my girlfriend. I'm not doing, I'm not going to do you like I did everybody else. You my girlfriend. <laughs> That I've was literally, it, I guilted myself into a relationship, wow. yeah. into being faithful. It was guilt that drove me to be in a relationship. Me and this young lady was so incompatible. <laughs> we were so incompatible. She literally was one of the most ineffectionate women I've ever dealt with. Wow. And I'm I'm very affectionate. Okay. Like I love for a woman to touch me, touch my bald head, rub okay. me, you know what I'm saying? Rub, like I love for a woman that knows how to, and I'm very affectionate with my woman. Okay. She was not. Wow. She was not. And it was to the point where she would almost be like, like almost like kind of like moving away. And I remember this was weird for me because I was always the one kind of yeah. pulling away from women yeah, when right. I felt like I had a woman pulling away from me. And I'm like, what in the hell is going on? Like, is there now I felt like there was something wrong for me? Damn, I'm too, am I too wimpy? Do I like to kiss? I, I need to kiss less. I need to, I need to touch my woman less. Wow. I remember feeling this way, wow. dealing with this woman, but again, it was literally just incompatibility. This was not a woman I should have been dealing with. True. I did not get good data on her. I did not have good values. I did not have a good vetting process. I dated all horribly. My whole purpose of the relationship was absolutely superficial and toxic and terrible, mm. but I started to like compromise on more of my belief system for somebody else instead of recognizing mm. this is not the person that wow. I need to be dealing with. Wow. And I think people make that same mistake all, all the, the damn time. time. Yeah. All yeah. The time. I agree. 
Wow, all the time. Incredible. But I transition to this. Y'all getting a lot of my. Uh, you, you, they get. They get some real personal. You know, the lives. The lives. Probably we probably go real deep into what we got you going know, on. That's lives. what I like about y'all, man. You guys are unafraid to, you know, just just be transparent and be real, man. Because there's so many people out here faking. They faking. Yeah, that's they fake. And I, but I think the I think our people respect that and they understand that there's like again there's a lot of data in the failure. Hmm. There's a lot of data in the failure, and. All over the internet, people are giving you these principles of success in whatever you know way they push it out there. But we are gonna give you that, and we gonna give you the real, meaning the failures, the hardships, the traumas, yeah, and show you how that ties into what you should be doing and how you should and could, how you should be moving. Wow. So I wanna I wanna actually transition to this because before we was talking about that vulnerable young lady, the lady who has that wall up, who has that vulnerability right. there. So as a man, this for me again, it's not for y'all. A man, he sees a, a young lady with that wall up. How does he approach a young woman to now beat that wall down and really get to her? Do you just want to beat it up after you beat the wall down? Or do you really want to get to know her? That's a that's a rhetorical. No, that, no, I'm, I'm, I want to know the answer to that. Okay, assuming, I, assuming, I, genuinely, answer... assuming I genuinely want a relationship with this young lady. Okay. So then what you do is, and this is powerful, what I'm going to tell you, what I'm going to tell you, you tell her that I want to chip away at this wall you have. I know you've been hurt in the past. I know that you have some reservations. You're not sure. Mm. But here's what I want to do. I, mm. I would like to get to know you. And what I'm going to do is chip away at this wall you have. Mm. What you, this is called objective resolution. What objective resolution works like this. It works like this in like, okay, you ever notice how you have beef with somebody, right? And you know that y'all got beef. So they can't really talk to you because of this beef, right? Right, right? You know what I'm talking about, right? But what if the person comes to you and says this? You know what, Ryan? I know we've had uh, problems in the past. You know, you thought things about me. I thought things about you. But, I, but what I want to do is I want to reconcile that. I want us to move forward. And here's what I was thinking. Now, are you more likely to entertain them if I tell you that I know what the problem has been? If I mention the problem first? Yes. Let me tell you why. Because I took the objection out of your mind and I put it on front street. It's like the people who coach with me. I tell them straight up. I say, you know what? The truth is I'm not, I'm not inexpensive. I'm very expensive. And the reason I'm expensive is because I'm very good. And I said, the truth is, people don't come to me because I'm the cheapest. They come to me because I'm the best. Mm. And I said, well, I understand. And I said, and I, what I do is the objection in their head when they see the price tag, they're going to say, wow. But when I purposely put the objection out front, now you're willing to listen further mm. because now you're listening for value. Mm. Do you see the difference? Mm. So what we're doing in this case, when you tell her, when you tell her, you know what? The truth is, I know you have a wall up. You maybe been hurt in the past. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my best to earn your trust and chip away at this wall you have. Is that all right with you? Mm. She might get a little moist when you say I that. I can <laughs> imagine that will really warm up a, a, oh, yeah. a good woman. She going to be, oh yeah. Because women know, <laughs> women know, women know what, right issues, they no, they, they know saying, what issues they have. No, I'm just saying, what I'm saying is, that, and, and in my communication class, I'm teaching these kind of methodologies. So that, that's what y'all going to get. That's what y'all going to get. Those of you who join the challenge, that's the kind of teaching you're going to get. I'm about to drop that link one more time because uh, we really going crazy right now. The chat is just off the chain. So you go ahead, you address yeah. the fact that this is what I'm going to do. Okay, but cool. I addressed it. Now, what am I doing further after just addressing it to actually make sure that I'm able to take the real life steps to remove that wall? Because now she understands she's open to it going okay, down Okay, let me now. show what happens next. Let me, yeah. Now, next one. There is a thing called neuro associative conditioning. My, my boy is a scientist. Y'all okay. better, better stop playing with Coach Kid. Uh, Coach so, Kid, a damn scientist. So, Let's get it. Uh, neuro associative conditioning, it, it works kind of like this mm -hmm. is you are conditioned in your mind to anything you have seen, done, or heard over and over and over again. All right. 
That's the reason why you guys can do some things in your sleep, right? You've been conditioned to it, right? So the way you condition a mind is they have to see the same behavior over and over again. So the way you chip away the wall is because in her mind that the mind represents, I have to see integrity for it before I know what it looks like. So now you honor your word. Every time you tell her something, you do what you say you're going to do. And if you can't do it, you tell her why you can't do it. If you are wrong, you would, you say that you were wrong and you admit that you were wrong and why you were wrong. And what she's doing is, what she's doing is she's seeing a man of integrity, a man that I'm willing to allow to chip this wall away because everything he said, he's done. And if you chip away my wall, I know that what you said you've done, I have the faith to believe that once you chip away my wall and get to my core person, that you will still do what you say you will, go, will do. Mm. That's what the woman wants you. She she wants you to get to the center of her. Yeah, but you that's how you get there though. So, so okay, let me just make sure I got this. Pretty much, you got to take extreme accountability. Oh, extreme. Extreme well, accountability. Not, not, not this, no, 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 not extreme. You just have to take accountability. So if I if I do something that I know is against what I've stated, I know goes against, you know, something in her path might be a trigger for her. You got to make sure you quickly address that. Absolutely. And is it like a is it like apologize? No, do you just think, address it? Do you think you're wrong? In the, in this hypothetical situation, this hypothetical, if I was wrong. Yeah, say I'm wrong. Okay, just say I'm, I'm wrong. I'm wrong, and here's what I'm going to do next time. You know, here's a toxic training that the players teach you growing up. Okay. <laughs> Never tell a woman sorry. You, you know, you probably know what I'm talking about. You know, you know, this, these are like the ancient scrolls of the players. <laughs> the players know this for real. And I'm sorry because th this is things that's been passed down. And I want to I wanna kind of understand this. You want to know why? Why is that? Because if I don't say I'm sorry, I make you believe it's your fault. It is manipulation. It's a form of gaslighting. Mm. It's a form of gaslighting. The term gaslighting comes from when I make you, when I get you to question your own reality. So if I never admit that I'm wrong, what happens is I get you to take responsibility for the shit I've done. Mm. Then it's a method of control. Okay, Ken, like now ooh, I can control. You see, you, ooh. So see, now you he, he going too hard. You can't be going against the player handbook one right, on one. Right, you know right, right. You've been revealing the secrets on, right now. This is, this y'all invi invited me on this you show. You really opened it up right now. This is now. big. Because, ladies, y'all might know this. If your man is seasoned and trained, he might intentionally never apologize. And, and I've apologized to a woman. I have. <laughs> he said it like, I apologized once. No, 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 no. Here's the thing. And when I did it, parts of me was like, like was telling myself, Ty, you know you're not supposed to be doing this. <laughs> but like, really, like I know the savage in you. I know the dude, but not even a savage. It just was. It's just it was just me. Like this was what what was right. taught to me right. about right. like just woman woman management. Like this is not what you do. Now it wasn't taught to me that this is gaslighting and manipulation. I was just taught that this is how you handle conflict. Not apologizing. I think they even say that in business, right? Like, yeah, you shouldn't say I'm sorry because when you say I'm sorry, you are sorry. So what you should do is say thanks for bringing that to my attention and that, keep moving. Uh, gaslight a customer. No, <laughs> essentially, <laughs> essentially, it's, it's manipulation. <laughs> it's funny because the thing is, so that's what a toxic, oh. the toxic player comes in because a player handbook is a bunch of nevers, and you should is a bunch of you should never. This do they have one out like that? Like, is it out? A player handbook? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the yes. game, Neil Strauss. I mean, I don't know who. Neil Strauss probably wrote one of the most popular books on games. I mean, so you know they got, you know, they got Pimpin' Ken. Mo, Hold on. Pimpin' Ken. Pimpin' Ken. Oh, you got Coach oh Ken and Pimpin' Ken. We got to get y'all both on the same That's show. When I told y'all I was reading about being a pimp, it was Pimpin' Ken's book. I started Pimpin' Ken. It's a dude named Pimpin' Ken? Yes, he's a, legend. he's a legendary pimp. He's a legendary pimp. He's a legendary pimp that puts information More so like Don, um... Yes. Uh, same all level. in the same family. Same level. All in the same, same family. Same level. But see, he puts... He actually puts out work teaching the ideology and the philosophies... About how to manipulate around women. Pimping. How to pimp. Yeah. And here's the thing. Don't ask why... Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in different types of content, ladies, but <laughs> yes, I have read Pimpin' Ken's... Somebody even put in the chat, yes, Pimpology is one of the books. But see, here's the thing, though. 
Damn. I didn't even get that from that book. I don't even know if that's where that came from. It's just being just trained up by guys that just kind of sure. give you feedback sure. on how to handle certain situations. But that's interesting. So a mature man, he's going to be apologizing to his woman, Absolutely. assuming that it's, you know. That he's wrong. Right. Assuming that he's wrong. I mean, that's the thing, y'all, is here's the thing. Listen, at the end of the day, if you want to be a pimp, do what pimps do. All right. If you want to have a yeah. relationship that works, do what works. Yeah. And I just t told you what works. You know, at the end of the day, do what works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying. They going crazy about them. Uh, about them books, though. They going crazy. I mean, this thing. I don't. I, know, we don't read them all. I, 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 I've never even heard. Yeah. I've heard that part. You never apologize. But I ain't not in a book because. But it's been handed because you down. knew he knew real pimps. That's the thing. He no, he not to read in the book. <laughs> I just knew fools who was out there doing what they was doing, and they just telling me what to do. I'm surprised you don't know Pimpin' Ken, though. Let, let, let me, I never heard of Pimpin' Ken. I've never heard. I, I mean, I've, I've Pimpin' Ken, Roger Allen Curry with Mo One. That's a big one. Neil Strauss, the game. Yeah, like it's, it's all about manipulation. They and, teach manipulation strategies to pretty much. It's like a sales book for women. Yeah, it's like they teach tactical ways to be able to get certain outcomes with women. Now, this thing, this thing. To hurt if people. used responsibly, no, not hurt, but to get. Out, it's like in sales, you know how they teach you. Yeah, yeah. Certain, I've read a million sales books. You know? And sa sales, low key, like when you before you read Jordan Belfort's book, he's like, "Be careful what I teach you." At the he puts a disclaimer in here yeah. because you can use this for good or bad. And that's the thing yes. about those I books: agree. if you good use point. them in, if you use them strategically and as honorably, you can use them those things, those tactics to have success in your long term sure. relationship. Sure. Absolutely. But most people are not using those things to have. They're success. using it to get sex exactly that's the reality of the situation and there's women actually that teach the same thing for men on the other side we actually looking for a couple of those ladies to come on mm -hmm. the show that'll be an interesting show there's women that teach you how to get money out of men there's yeah, women that teach you they're how they're to they're manipulate men in these different ways as well the manipulation is the thing that's happening on both too, yep. sides of the game that's just the reality of you know the psychology of dealing with people that truly is a psychology and behind we explore it. the dark side too because this thing you no, have you to, guys you, better put it all out there. Yeah, we are. You got to let people you gotta, you gotta know. Let, you got to introduce people to these things introduce and how these it. things work yeah, and no, let I them interpret it for themselves. Case. And see, that's the thing. And that's why we actually put this out in front of y'all, ladies, because, ladies, this here puts you in a position to, if you want healthy relationships, to uh, how to identify the BS and protect yourself so you can understand. That's why we just talked about it. A man is not aligned with you. Don't have nobody feeling like, you wrong about certain things that, oh my God, I'm not giving them sex. I'm messing up. I'm what's going on. No, not in alignment. That's just really what it is. But I want to ask you this too, for somebody who may not know what it looks like, I want you to kind of help that person out. Eat, no, help the ladies out because a man might have a wall up as well. Yes. What does a man look that's struggling with his vulnerability? What does a man look that has a wall up. How does a woman know? Because there, there, there might be some things mm. you might have to do to navigate that kind of man. Mm. What does he look like? That's a very good question because I get that all the time. Women say he just won't communicate. He just won't communicate. And so, let, but let me let me take it back. When men are reared, we're grown up. What do, what do men? What do they tell us? You know what? When you get hurt, they say suck it up. Yep. They say don't talk. Don't be no little bitch. Don't cry about it. Don't express it. So we've been taught, we have been groomed not to share our emotions. And so when that same little boy becomes an 18, 20 year old, he sees communicating with as a sign of, of expressing his feelings as a sign of weakness. 100%. So at 30 years old, same guy. Now he gets in a relationship with a woman who has been told your man should share his, his, his feelings with you. And if he's not sharing his feelings with you, there's something wrong, right? Unknowing that the trauma he's experienced, the conditioning he's experienced, is you don't share your feelings. So the woman, no, uh, the woman who has been coached by Coach Ken, understands that, and so she understands how to nurture him to be a communicator. She understands that she's got to communicate first so that he sees the law of reciprocity. She understands that she allows him to go in his cave when he's trying to figure out something. 
Mm. See, because your man, you want to talk about it, you talk about it at the wrong time. She understands how to tell him that she wants to talk about a situation, but gives him the time to process it. See, did you, did you see, notice what I'm doing. Yeah. All the things I'm teaching them is how you get the man to break down that wall just a little bit. Just a little bit. And then after a while, you've actually trained him how to communicate. Mm. See how that works? Yeah. And then some of us say, I ain't got to train no man. Well, I said, well, let me ask you a question. If he doesn't know, if he's never been taught, you're not willing to teach him if you know how? If, if he's worth it? If the relationship is worth it, are you willing to teach him? A lot of women say, no, I'm not willing to say, well, keep it moving. I say, well, keep doing what you're doing. Because listen, y'all, anybody listening to me, you have to teach people how to love you because they don't come with a manual. My wife, she had to teach me how to love her. I had to teach my wife how to love me. Y'all, we think, because people say stuff like this all the time. One of the things people say, well, he didn't open my door. He ain't opened my door, you know what? So I just left. I'm like, I said, well, wait a minute. I said, well, did you tell him that you want, do you like your door open? She's like, no, he should know that. I said, well, wait a minute. He's, you're assuming, you're making the assumption he's been taught that. You're making the assumption that he knows that, but you're unwilling to communicate it to him. Mm. I said, so you penalize him because he doesn't know and you're unwilling to teach him. Mm. Let me ask you this, Ken, because uh, you you dropping some game right now, but I think I got something tricky for you because we had uh, Dr. Tart. We had Dr. Alju Aljuan Tart on the show. We okay. we haven't released that episode yet. We just had him um last week. Okay. And um I was sharing with him that, you know, I spoke to one of my uh one of our members um on the call and she was telling me, "Hey, she's having some issues. She's in a long-term relationship." And actually a few of them expressed this. It's really this very similar situations. They but need they, to join they, my challenge. Yeah, okay. they're all in long-term relationships and they've been continually persistently communicating to their man verbally that changes need to be made. Okay. The result that they get from their man is when they're getting ready to leave, they'll change for a time or when they really, really complain, they'll change for a time, but it always goes back or the man continues to ignore the situation where now they're at the point where they're considering in that early stages, some of them, the latter stages of considering leaving. Now, Dr. Tart. He advised women that what they need to do is be consistent in their communication, which is verbalizing it to their man, and also in their actions, which means potentially withholding sex, which means not get. So when the man, for example, when the man goes up to kiss the woman, he's saying, hey, you need to go ahead and move out the way. And you do these things action wise to pretty much show the man less affection less sex, and less overall interest. And he says that that is the best way to communicate thoroughly to a, that, to a man that he needs to change. What is, your, what is your thoughts on that? Okay. Let me explain it. So I agree with him in a sense. What he's essentially doing, let me break it down from a mental standpoint. He's essentially interrupting a pattern. So we all have patterns. Everything we do is a pattern. We what A pattern is man does some. I go back to doing what I've always done, okay? He does something I don't like, but I still reward him by giving him the sex that he needs. So it's a pattern. So he doesn't have any reason to change. Mm -hmm. what, what Dr. Tard is saying is, you're essentially interrupting the pattern. If you do this, then I'm going to interrupt that pattern by doing something different than what I normally would do. Right. To, okay? And if you interrupt that pattern enough, then what he's saying is it will spark a new behavior, okay? It's kind of like the person who every time you say something, they don't say nothing back. But then one day they blow slap up. And then I'm saying, like, whoa, what happened? But then instead I tell them this. Every time somebody hurts your feelings or something like that, you check them and say, hey, you know what? The truth is what you just said is hurtful. I don't appreciate it. Then every time they say it again, I thought I had told you it was hurtful. Well, what they're doing is interrupting the pattern interrupting the pattern, okay? And then what they're saying is, I'm not going to reward bad behavior. That's why he's saying, yeah. don't give them that. I'm not gonna reward the behavior. If you're not willing to be all in with me, I'm not gonna reward that bad behavior. I'm gonna interrupt this pattern and I'm not gonna stop rewarding bad behavior. So there is some validity, definitely validity to what he's saying. Yeah, I think it's scary to think about, right? As a man receiving that, 
But when I really think about the way that the men I know operate and the way that I operate, it's like we do have to have that stimuli with the reward. Like we, it's not we're not animals, right? Like it's like the, no, it's, like, it's like the Pavlov experiment, right? But no, no, no but that's, that's how exactly we learn. What it is. That's how we learn. So we know. And the thing is, a woman may get upset by that. Well, why do I gotta do all that? From I just want my man to to do this on his own and want him to want to do it. But that's just not how we work. Mm, we well, have to know the rules of engagement and once the pattern once we see how our actions get us certain rewards we will start tailoring absolutely. our actions to that and hey, women do the same thing mm. they do the same thing they just don't say it. they just don't say they do it. Mm. and so everybody does that and so what you have to do is you have to understand see this is what goes back to training it goes back to being mentored it goes back to being coached if you don't know how then you're going to be perpetually frustrated. It's, it's perpetual frustration that's going to continue to be abound because you don't know what to do. And that's exactly why y'all need to make sure y'all go ahead and join that challenge. Yeah, because that do. challenge is coming off and popping off here. Special situations just for my Harley Initiated family. Going down tonight at the end of this month, Coach Ken and Harley Initiated has come together to put something for to put something together just for y'all. So please. Do not let these opportunities to personally develop yourself, to have a, a beautiful family, beautiful future, and create the fuel, create the reality you want for yourself to pass by you. Don't do that. Yes, and real quick, because I missed this one. Shout out to Katrina Lewis with the super chat. And Katrina, I see she got that, she got that blue, that blue star bar. Mm. I, I just like to see that. I like to see these different stars. Now the light blue is for my members that's been with us for 30 days or more. Yeah. So I'm just waiting because it's going to level up every month. The stars change every month. So, guys, be patient with us because we're going to deliver on this membership. One of the things that you're doing is helping us. You're supporting the channel. It helps us pay the bills, first and foremost. True. And it helps us to bring on guests and put together excellent production, which we are going to be improving. The second thing you're going to be doing once you join the membership is we're going to continuously solicit you guys for the guests that we need, the conversations that we need to have, the segments that you like. Because you guys, all of our members, are going to be determining the direction that our channel moves in and the content that we bring you. And the third thing that's going to happen is that we are going to drop the members-only chat. We're going to start doing that every episode because the membership, the chat is growing. It's getting crazy. So this is the thing. You want to join the membership now because when we drop that members-only chat, everybody asks the questions. How do I submit my guests? How do I get more involved? Join the membership and you're going to get all the information listen, that you need just to know. Just so y'all know, it's about we about to close this thing out. We got to get Coach Ken some sleep. It's getting late in man, here. I'm not going so, all night, man. So I want y'all, I want y'all to send y'all super chats in so we can ask some questions for Coach K. Y'all want to ask some questions, send them super chats in because it's getting real close to that QA hour. So y'all go ahead and get that rocked off, popped off. And yeah. I want to ask you. That's my favorite thing when they ask hey, questions. Hey, man, y'all got to join this challenge. Unfaithful to unstuck. Listen, y'all, if you're out there and you honestly are just, just want to let go of unhealthy attachments, if you want to let go of past loves that people betrayed you, infidelity, whatever it is, you got to take the first step. Nobody's coming to save you. That's just the truth. That is. Nobody's coming to save you, but you have the ability. God has given you the power, the ability to save yourself. Join this challenge. So three-day challenge, and what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to get out of where you are. Y'all, the content, we, we go hard. And just like I'm doing, we're having fun here. We're having fun here, but it's intense. Breakthroughs. It's intense. Breakthroughs. And listen, there are things that are holding you back. And for those of you who can join VIP, get VIP. Uh, my, And I, I'm going to just say this. You can get VIP for $297. My hourly rate is $600 an hour now. But I will take time. Everybody in VIP gets my personal attention for $297 for three days. Light. Anything you want to ask. Use Light that down. code. Heal. Oh, yeah, listen, the Light. code. Oh, the code. If you And if those of you just want to get the regular admission, my people pay $97 for this challenge. We probably got 50 people in it now. But for hardly initiated people, if you put in, in the coupon code HEAL, H-E-A-L, you get it for half that cost. 
Jesus, man. So y'all stop playing, man. Shout out to Delano. Y'all stop Shout playing. Shout out to Delano. Yo, I see you we, working over there, man. Listen, we just got another sign up for the challenge. Excellent. Shout out to Ken. Shout out to R33C3, The Righteous. Just joined the YouTube membership. So we got a lot of stuff going on. So we talking about this. Let's, let's get back to the conversation here while the people still here. We talking about going from... Un, what is it going from what is unfaithful it to unstuck. unfaithful to unstuck so let's talk about people who are stuck okay right people who are stuck how does somebody who is stuck date move and interact with their relationships versus somebody who isn't what did, what does it look like on a hand-to-hand -hand combat level with how they may operate within their relationships between the in the difference like what, what might that look like i want to make sure i understand so you're saying it's two different people you're saying how does the stuck person operate versus the unstuck person absolutely i can answer that easily what's that the stuck person looks for what's wrong i mean the, the stuck person looks for what's wrong the unstuck person look for what's right yo that's man this is thing ken i wow. think that's so true because we we've been opening up conversations with our members and these are lovely women especially the women the, the guys are great the women are lovely but these lovely women are like yo as much as i listen to y'all as much as i want a healthy relationship all these are all the reasons right that i ain't doing it right and i I think that's the most simplest way. I want to get more right context there. on that though. When you say they look for what's wrong, right, what 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 versus what's wrong? What does that mean? You so know exactly instead that. of focusing on, so the person who is unstuck, let's start with the person who's unstuck. Yeah, looks for what's right in a relationship. You know what? They know everybody doesn't come perfect. They know, but I'm looking for oh, he communicates well. He's an ambitious guy. Now I could say he don't talk that much because he don't hardly call me. But, or I could say he spent too much time at work, but I decide to look at what is positive. He's, he's super ambitious mm. building this company. He communicates with me when he can, but it's so in depth. So I look for what's right in the, uh, in the endeavor, as opposed to I'm looking what, for what's wrong. A stuck person looks for what's wrong. Would you say that's the more of an optimist? Is that what it is? Oh, it could be that. It could be optimist. It could be pessimist. But 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 I just know when you're stuck, when you're stuck, when you're in a rut, all you look for is what's wrong. I can only see what's wrong. Oh, he don't call me that much. Oh, he ain't got time for me. Mm. Or, or I could take I could take him for a seven day cruise. I take my wife to a seven day cruise in Jamaica, right? Because I told her I said she she wanted to go before COVID. So I said, I'm, I'm, I'm seven days. And you know what she said? What's that? She says, thank you for taking this time for me. She could have been like, about time. You don't never tell you got time for all these other women, you know, because of what I do, all these other guys. But she says, I appreciate the time that you set aside for me. That is good, ain't it? That's what unstuck looks like. You know what? Let me tell you. So, damn, that's true. I'm dating this one young lady right now. I like the most serious young lady I'm dating, like... Hands down, like, okay, man. Could she, could she be the one? She could. She okay. gotta get uh, some some mindset things I don't really like, which I've communicated. But definitely got could, great. Could you help groom that and grow that? I think. So. I mean, I'm that's what I'm. I'm, I'm hanging in there to do so. Groom. And I don't mean groom. Right. No, I don't no, mean, no, no, listen, listen. I, don't I know what you mean. No, no, I, don't I, mean no. I don't mean groom. I don't mean no, no. no, no, no. groom. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. But people listen, just like to think take about it. To that. We we've been using all the offensive words tonight. Train. Yep. Groom. Yep. But I think at the end of the day, a woman wants to be trained. Because first of all, it takes like you said, the woman needs to be also training the man. Like Every you need to be training yeah. each other right. on how to love you. On how we need to be dealing with each other. Yeah, so I, I don't care. All, all that listen, if y'all get offended, you need to damn sure be in that challenge if you get offended. <laughs> <laughs> when, I, when I use the word groom, I simply mean that um I just simply mean door coach, mentor, whatever. But you know, you know, they use the word groom in a negative sense and they do it's know, ridiculous and groom and grooming young people to do stuff i get that part that's not what I, we're talking about you know i i know but so i don't i don't I, I rarely i because my intent is so pure in what i do some of the words i might use that are 
that are offensive, uh, but I use them in a different context. I might not even be, I might not be cognizant I'm using it, but I have to be. So when you said the word groom, I was like, oh shit, that's that's a word that people might get triggered by. Yeah. But I will change that word and say coached, mentored. You know, so so let me so let me go back to it. I could potentially coach, mentor, groom, whatever you <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Impress. Impress. But one thing, one thing I would say that she does that I love, some game for the ladies. Y'all might want to throw this into your repertoire. She might just randomly text me or call me and say, thank you so much for this beautiful life that you created for me. I love this. I love it here. That's good stuff. How it make you feel? That should make you feel good. Good, good. That should make you feel good. Really? I like that. So somebody understands that whatever you're bringing, they appreciate. Yes. It's showing an appreciation for your time, your energy, your efforts. Yes whatever you're investing in that area. And I agree, that's like a level of health. Like, it's almost like if you have a team, make sure you're telling your team, showing your team appreciation, yes. compliment, telling them what they're doing right, not just focusing on what's wrong. A bad right. leader is gonna be chastising them when they make mistakes and not telling them when they're doing a great job. Indeed. You know what I'm saying? So I, I think all of those things are, that, that's, a, that's a really, really good. Yo, so That's check really this good. out. Shout out to Andre. Yo, Andre got to be the biggest supporter, man. Andre, he says, he sent over a super chat, drop $10 or more if this is the best show on the web. Well, look, I'm going to drop $10 because I know this is the best show on the web. And then we got Fancy. Yo, Fancy, so let me tell you. So I actually spoke to Fancy. Me and Fancy, we probably had at least a 30-minute conversation. Okay. And Fancy, I really, really like her. She is happily married. All right. She says, Coach K, happily married, approaching 20 years, 30 yes. years together is what she said. I love it. And when I spoke to Fancy, I truly believed that she was in a happy marriage. And with the thing about Fancy, which I really like, she's like, yo, Ryan, I watch y'all because I'm always trying to bring that heat in my relationship. So she watches it to get tips and some tricks to try to make things okay. even better, okay? Even better. And so what she asks is, yo, best words of wisdom to maintain her magic. That's what she wants to know. 20 years of marriage, 30 years together. Best words of wisdom to maintain that magic. See, magic, when I hear magic, I don't know if my mind is just polluted. I automatically think sex. Is it wrong? Sex is a part of it. Sex is a part of magic. But, 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 okay, but I have to answer this question like that. Ask this question like, is sex and intimacy the same? I don't think so. I think I think I think sex is an aspect of intimacy, but intimacy does expand beyond just sex. Or uh, I think I think sex intimacy can be a part of sex as well. Yeah, but intimacy can be a standalone. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Maybe maybe that's what I meant to say. Yeah, it can be a standalone <laughs> because intimacy. And, and let me let me let me let me talk to Fancy for a minute. Fancy, I'm so happy that. You know, because I believe in love and, you know, me and my wife always spicing up the relationship. And, and here's the thing. It's not just sex, but sex is a part of it. But more importantly, intimacy is a part of it. We still share. We still laugh. We still talk about my wife is a comedian. In real life, she traveling everywhere. She had a few minutes. And well, wait, no, she really is a comedian. Like she travels and tells my jokes. My wife been on the stage open for Fred Hammond, open for uh uh what's your boy? Well, I was not expecting that. I was my, not my wife been all over the world doing comedy. So y'all both got, got some got huge two, personalities. She got two gigs this weekend. Oh yes, yeah, that is an interesting y'all get collab invited room. to every party I could imagine. Oh, oh my party. god. Oh we start, we about to we used to do a podcast. It wasn't like this it was just, just yeah. us in front of the camera. People that's how we built the following People's wow. like y'all off the chain. I want to meet your wife. I want to yeah, meet your wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Will. Um, but what I will say is the one thing is this: never forget the other person's value, okay, and never take the relationship for granted. So here's how you don't take the relationship for granted. Always. So what me and my wife do? We created. We wrote this book. We we tell people to do relationship diagnostics, and so let me tell you what that is. We created this concept. So you know when your car, when the when, when the check engine light come on? And some people just, when check engine light come on, they just keep driving. <laughs> they get, they, they be like, well, I ain't got the money to fix it. I've been there. Oh, uh, like, You just ignore it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> look at it. <laughs> the car's still running, right? And so, but 
What we teach people to do in a relationship diagnostic is, because what you essentially want to do is take your car in so they can put it up on the rack and see what's going on with it. Well, but if you do the maintenance beforehand, then you don't worry about the check engine like coming because it ain't coming on. So what we what we do two times a year, we do a relationship diagnostic. We put our relationship up on the rack, mm. and we did it in, the, in Jamaica. And, and and almost every time I get hot about something, because my wife told me this time, she was like, you know, because we because we talk about real stuff, and, and but when we walk away, because she because she says, you know what. The one thing that I want you to improve upon in the next six months is I need you to be intentional about spending more time away from your clients and away from you. Too. And I know what she was talking about. Now, the 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 the, the, the first to do to me was like, I afford you the lifestyle to get everything you want to get. Mm. All right. But now here's what I do. I said, honey, OK, tell me how I can do that. Let's decide right now what I need to do. And what can make you feel better by doing it? And so we came up with a plan, which I've adhered to. Just like her coming down here, I said, would you please ride with me? Just so we can kick it. She at the hotel now. She, she yeah, look, she got to perform till Friday and Saturday. So we like, all right. And she was like, you want to come over? She was like, no, nah, you, just, you just go do your thing. And so what we do is, is I honor that. I honor that. Because listen, y'all, remember this. If a person feels it, it's valid. It doesn't make it factual, though. See, we assume because we feel it, it's factual. We have to separate facts and feelings. And so, but even though it may not be factual, but because you feel it, I have to address it. Mm. Most of us don't address it. And you want to know the truth? Yeah. The truth is this, y'all. Why do most relationships break up? Because they don't feel in love. They don't have the feeling anymore, right? Yeah. Because they don't feel it because the truth is when you get in a relationship, you're signing an unwritten contract that says, my goal is to meet your emotional needs, your top emotional needs. I, I'm going to have to come back for that one. Because I could break down the 10 emotional needs. And what happens is when you fall out of love is because the other person is not meeting your emotional needs. But what if they don't know what they are? What if there are 10 emotional needs? They're, they're really about 12, but there was a book called His Needs, Her Needs. You know, affection, conversation, sexual fulfillment, domestic, uh, recreational um, companionship. companionship, all of the 10 needs, right? right? What if my top three needs were sex, uh, physical appearance. domestic and physical appearance, right? And yours were family. They can call you a misogynistic dude if that's the case. That financial, <laughs> whatever. Right. Financial, family, and and a conversation. Picture. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, you, my top three, all right, and and your top three are down here, right? Mm -hmm. And your my top three are your bottom three, but you're not trying to meet my top three. Right. See, that's the misnomer about relationships. My top three don't have to be your top three. You just have to make an effort to meet my top three. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. the difference. And change how you, or, or change which ones you focus on based on that person's need. Because sometimes right. their top three may change. It may change. My top three have changed. Has and changed. see, what we typically do is we talk shit about each other's top three. We do. So like we'll say... Okay. Why you only care about all you care women, about women, too much? All you care about you is sex. superficial. Yes, you just want a bunch of damn sex. Yeah. Why do men want that sex so true. much? <laughs> Instead of just figuring out how we can satisfy, and that's what me and my wife do. That's how we keep it alive. That you should, fancy. That's how we keep it alive. You can imagine. You, obviously, she's doing it, but that's how we do it. Okay, Whoa. Ken. Ooh. Ken, the question's coming in. Hey, I, can, I can already say this. Somebody, it's over y'all sitting there. The only reason I made that face is because we getting spicy. We getting vulnerable. Well, so, hey, it's the late night special for a reason, y'all. It is, it is. So look, guys, before I before I talk about this, because I know Ken is going to go, going to give us some real good counsel on this. Ooh. I'm going to drop because we already been dropping the, the challenge link. I'm going to drop Ken's Instagram 
profile. Okay. Let's get Ken 125 new followers on IG just to show them how much we appreciate this free game. So Absolutely. check this out. Shout out to Jack Star. Love the profile pic, by the way, Jack. Looks great. I'm in a sexless marriage. Capitalize the sexless, Ken. Once every six months, he's amazing, but low libido. Mm. Okay. Married nine years, sex therapy, pastor counseling, doctors for testosterone, all of her efforts now. So they, they done did those things, but all of her efforts. And I keep myself up, which means she looking good. Okay. But she's tired. Mm. Ken, what's up? Um, did she say, can she answer this question right here? I know she said she initiated the, the it sounds like it, it's a physical problem. It sounds yes. like a physical problem. Yes. Um, uh, the testosterone, did you get the uh, testosterone pellets? Please answer that question right there. Yeah, she said sex therapy, pastor, pastor, pastor counseling, and doctors for testosterone. All She said yes. Efforts. She got the pellets. She said yes. He got the pellets and it didn't change. I, I want to know, did he take the pellets? Because because I have, I have this in my coaching, and I explain to a couple what they should do because it's physical. Because here's, let me explain what's happening. A lot of times, men, we, we conflate our manhood with our sexuality. Yes, 100%. Yes, they put the pellets in his hip. Holy crap. Okay, and did he continue to get them? I'm, I'm just, I just, I just want lotions, to creams, everything. <laughs> Yo, so Ken, first off, you wow. the man because I've never even heard of these things. So, thank you for being an expert. Oh, I appreciate. And she, it. Said, and she said, yes, he did. Wow, yes, and he did. And thank you for sharing, Jack. Thank you for no, sharing. Jack. Thank you for sharing that. That's very vulnerable, and thank I'm you. sure a lot of people are probably experiencing this and do not have the cojones to talk about that right here. So that, let's get some game on this. So honestly. That that uh, that amazes me, and I'll tell you why. Okay, for, uh, one more question. I gotta ask one more question because this is what I do with my coaching. Oh, Jack, you're not the only one. We no. get no, 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 no. She's not the only one. She, she's not the only one. When did this start? How long has it been going on? Was it has it always been this way, or did it just start? Um, I just I gotta get context for this. Okay, okay, okay. And, and I, I think, and I think, I think Janelle. First off, I think we. Yo, we're going to bring this damn virtual situation up because I would have loved to bring Jack Star oh, on up here right amazing. now because of all of these questions you got, I wish we can actually get her to share these things. But she says it started three, wow, started three months after marriage. Keep in mind, they've been married nine years. And three it gradually after. got worse. Okay. Um, did they have a lot of sex prior to marriage? Did you have a lot of sex prior to marriage? Damn. He's 51. I'm 40 years old, she says. So I know what's happening. What's happening is, so, I, and the reason I'm asking these questions is because I deal and with- And yes, they yes, had once sex a week. once a week prior to, to marriage. Okay, so the problem was already actually there. Mm. The problem progressed. Um, Cause if they weren't having sex but once a week before they got married, that's only four times a month. All right. And I'm not saying, and again, I'm not saying, so obviously she's taking care of herself and her libido is probably much higher than his. Sure. Uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a given. I'm sure. If he's tried all of the testosterone therapy, obviously his testosterone was low. There are probably some other physical things going on. If it started three months after marriage. All right. Now he's now he's 51 years old. What I would say is I would. Get, I don't know if he's had a full body makeover in terms of testing his entire body. Now, do you want to say something? Please. So, Ken, you right on track because she says, "Yes, the problem." He she he told her that he knew it was a problem. Yes, but we love each other, and she went ahead and came so, down. So that brings me to the point. That problem is not a new problem; it's a progressive problem. Oh, okay. That problem has always been there, but what happened was Jack. She uh, she loves she loves him, right? Okay, so she tolerated uh, incompatible libidos in that case. 
Now that it's progressively gotten worse, now she doesn't know what to do. Because whereas she could tolerate once a week, that was okay. That was all right for her. That's still four times a month. Now it's once every six months, right? And so she just didn't understand what to do. Now what I will tell her is this. She said something that the key in here, that's the key, is she initiated all of them and he's not initiating any of it. So that tells Mm. me that he's okay with the problem the way it is. Or he's probably embarrassed Embarrassed. about the problem. But it's still being okay. It's still it's still been okay with yeah. it. Yeah, he might well right now, by now he he might be embarrassed, but that's his wife. He loves her, she loves him, right? He knows she knows. Nobody's hiding this. Nobody's hiding. We can't hide the fact that my libido is not working. No, nah, you can't hide it. And so the, the thing that I'm more concerned with, not that the fact that it's not working, the fact that he's not willing to try to fix it. Now, this is some background information as well. So it may be some emotional uh, situation going on here too, but they actually have uh, Jack and her husband have a disabled daughter. He was tired all the time due to his job. So that was an issue as well. Um, But she's fixed all of that. New job. The daughter is gone. And she's like, what? I mean, what next? Okay. So I wish he could come on. I want to talk to her. But what I would say this right here. I'm going to say this. It is a physical problem that has become a mental problem. That's what it sounds like. Mm. All right. No. So think about this. A physical problem. So when people are ill, yep, their mentality changes. They think. Especially many, a man. Especially a man. When a man gets ill, especially our libido is tied to our manhood. Mm-hmm. Right. And so instead of me dealing with it, I'd rather avoid it. Instead of me talking about that, me trying to fix it, I rather avoid it because what it does, it puts a mirror in front of me. And that mirror begins, I have to look at the inefficiency or ineffectiveness of me as a man. And so what it has to be, what has to happen right now, honestly, is I suggest is that, and I told one of my clients this, who corrected a problem just like this. Whereas you talk to the man and say, listen, here's what it means to me. She's probably already done that. And, but she's got to reiterate why, why it's important for her. Cause she's only 40 y'all at 40. That that thing's still jumping. That That thing's still juicy. Let me just be honest. And so she loves this man. So, but she's got to convince the man, the mental part of the man, the mental part of him. He's he's broken. It's broken. Yeah. The mental part is broken. We he could fix the physical part if we could fix the mental part. Yeah. And the way we fix the mental part is she has to reassure him she loves him that we can do this together that and, and go get help. I know they got help from the pastor, but no man wants to talk to another man about my I'm not able to or get woman. Money. Like it's hard. And so, and that's the thing too. Just it's kind of a man. Let me tell you, the sex, sex, the reality of it is, it truly is a delicate part of a man's manhood. And just try not to break his confidence. Yes. Like really try to make sure you don't get emotional in a way where you now start to beat him down because everything about when a man lays it down, when you know when you lay it down with a woman, you feel more like a man. You feel like chest. You ah. Are you like, like you might just, ah! like you might just want to just, just let it all out. Like you feel like a man and the exact opposite. I can only imagine is true mm-hmm. when you're not able to perform in that way. So just make sure you really got to make like the mental aspect. Cause a woman has a lot to do with a man's a mindset. That's asking a lot though, because you got to keep in mind there's two people experiencing what you know the the impact of, i mean but it is a lot that's the situation mm-hmm. it is a lot already so i mean it's only gonna get worse but i mean the, the, the thing about it is if you get in a situation where you it starts to beat you down and you start to beat him down yeah i mean that that i, I know for a fact that's not gonna help the situation she says she's not she 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 sounds like jack jack star sound like she in the game for for l shout out to jack so, man. shout out, shout to, out jack. to her this is the thing matter of fact jack star you need to be a member then, right here go, go ahead and get that membership because, right now jack star yes please. I, I'm, I'm just very curious because we yo this is a problem ken it is this is a big problem and sexless man and see we we talked about sexless marriages but it was kind of like the two month three month but it's the sex 
first off, she's I still don't cause even consider that an extreme case. Now, the fact that it's been nine years, I consider it an extreme case. Yeah. But I've spoke to women who haven't had sex in five, six, ten years. Yeah. And they're so dejected that they don't even have the energy to go out and cheat. Wow. It's deep, man. And I'm going and I'm gonna be honest with you. But there has to be a willingness. You know, it all starts with the willingness mm. to to address it. Because a lot of us don't want to address it. But it all starts with that. And then we go from there. Yeah. We go from there. Yeah. Listen, I, I appreciate. Again, I appreciate Jack Star says she's becoming a member now. I absolutely love it. Welcome, Jack Star. I absolutely love it. And I really respect your loyalty, you know, to, to your husband. And um, if you can keep it real, has that ha, have thoughts of it? I just want to know personally if you can really keep it uh, 1,000 with me. Have thoughts of infidelity or even actual infidelity, you know, was, was inspired there? Because I, I know, you know, that urge, that sexual urge, it can get real. It can turn into a whole demon yeah. in your mind. It could yeah. talk you into some things True. that you just never imagined. And one thing can lead to another. I mean, because there's so many ways to self-soothe these days. True. Sure. Especially when it comes to porn and and yeah, and, sure. and, and, and masturbation and those types of things. So I I uh I, I Jack, we got you in our prayers. Ken has dropped some game on how to how to to handle that situation. It, oh, yeah. I want to cheat every day, but I have not. I'll divorce before I cheat, but I'm tired of the porn. All right, Jack, you're keeping the 1,000 because that's, yeah. yeah. So real, real quick, shout out to Jack wow. Star because I know she's going to become a member. And shout out to Daniela Zambrano. Shout out to, that's the, I'm assuming that's the Mama Seats. Shout out to the Mama Seats is joining, joining the membership. Yeah, you but know. Go ahead, Ken. Go ahead, Ken. No, I'm just, I, I, I admire her for her courage because, you know, this takes courage. Yeah, listen, and, and we're going to get ready to close this thing out. If we don't got no more Super Chats. We're going to get ready to close this thing out. Here's what I want to do, because I want to get a jump on us being active to start bringing people on, because I'm very motivated by this. There's two things. I'm going to give some, uh, we, we're going to come up with something better next time, Ryan. But here's what I want to just give some action steps to do. For the people who are interested and qualified to be the moderator, I think you said you want them to be a member already of the platform. They already, you, you must be a member. Got to be a member. you have to have been with us for at least 30 days. So... I'm going to be open because it's a few people that's close to 30 days. Yes. So I'm going to actually wait uh, till Monday. So some of y'all are like 27, 28, 29. So by Monday, y'all have been at 30 days. So go ahead and email us if you're interested in becoming a moderator at info at hardlyinitiated.com. And I'm going to go ahead and drop that link down. Yes. There. And what I also want you to do, guys, that same email, if you are someone who has questions or problems in your relationship, whether it's infidelity, whether it's sex, whatever it might be, I want you to also email us what your issue is on um, uh, to that same email, Info at Harley Initiated. But must be a member because we're going to get a lot of emails. You have to be a member, yes, guys. You, you must be, be a, a member. member. And assuming you're a member, we will pull qualified emails up to bring them on to these shows in the future so we can give you the counsel that you need. We consistently taking care of our members. We want to find the experts and the people that can answer your questions so you can figure these things out in your relationship. This is very, very, very important, guys. And, and real quick, because Ken has been really dropping that game. So I've already dropped his Instagram in here a thousand times. You can look in the episode description as well to find it. And I've also dropped the three-day unstuck challenge as well. But... Ken, I know you got to get ready to go. You've been spending a lot of time with us. Ken, oh, man, Ken, Ken traveled all the way in town for us to give y'all this. So this is the thing, Ken. We got one more question. Is it is cool to take one more question, Ty? Let's do it. All right, we got one more question from Lynn Gray. Shout out to Lynn Gray. Why would a man that I am dating tell me I am welcome to his home at any time? Don't even need to call first, but post another woman. So pretty much he says, <laughs> hey, Come to my home anytime. Don't even don't even call. But then he goes and posts another woman. What what the heck? What's going on with this dude? Well, shout out I, to Lynn, by the way. Hey Lynn, thank you for asking. The truth is, is that that's part of a playbook. All right? It's part of a playbook. Now he's like, yo, you're welcome all the time. Obviously, I I, I doubt very did he tell you you guys were exclusive? Lynn. 
So can, uh, can, listen, Ken, you dig deep, bro. You dig deep. So that's a good question. Lynn, did he explicitly say that you guys were exclusive? And while Lynn lets us know that, shout out to EJT. EJT the Rocco. I'm surprised. I thought EJT, I thought you'd have had this, 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 uh, this baby blue star by now because EJT's been rocking with us. But best podcast out, EJT, I'm inclined to agree with you. And let's see what she says. I don't see her. Lynn Gray says yes. Yes. He says they were exclusive. So if that's the case, and you said he posted another woman, so that, that says something. Number one, it says that he's okay. He feels comfortable posting another woman. Mm. So what that also says that is that his mindset is, is that, listen, I'm going to tell you this, but you're going to have to get used to this. Mm. And so a lot of times when somebody will put it in your face and then Try you. And, and what it is, that's just, just testing. He's just saying, listen, you can come over, but I would be careful about that. If he's telling you can come over, fine. If he told you you were exclusive or did you just think you were exclusive? Mm. All right. Because a lot of times we can misconstrue what someone says. Yes. A person might say, yo, you my girl. Yeah. Now notice what I just said. You my girl. But that doesn't mean we're exclusive. Yeah. All That's right? true. And yeah. they, might, they might also say, babe, I don't want you talking to no other niggas. <laughs> right. They might say that too. Or they might say, I love you. Exactly. Yep. All of these things have you morphed this this thing in your mind absolutely to make you think this but but i always say this don't listen to what he says listen to what he does what a man does will tell you how he feels and so listen if a man says i want a great relationship you just my person and he proposed somebody else then that's not true it's just not true so now, this is interesting this, this, is a, this is really interesting. Damn, y'all got some interesting stories. She says they had a discussion and he knows that I would not be intimate otherwise. So pretty much they had a discussion, but it was like, hey, you know you're not going to get the poom poom <laughs> if we're not exclusive. So is that even a good, is that even a good, was that a good, well, should Lynn have done that? Now, so Lynn assumed because he took the poom poom that we're exclusive because we had the discussion. <laughs> But that ain't what he said. Mm. That's not what he agreed to. And so what Lynn, Lynn made have uh, uh, agreed to that, but that's not what he agreed to. Mm. Just being honest. So Lynn, that's, I mean, that's, uh, man, you might have to, I don't know, but she might have to throw that fish back in the water. Yeah. I mean, look, he, he, he posted for the world to see. <laughs> yeah, he, he's out there. I mean, cause this thing, see, that's what I don't like. That especially, it's like the audacity to post this woman the audacity. who is. That, I mean, that's really audacious. And for now, other people to because pretty much you're ex, you're protecting this woman. That's what you're saying. You're saying to the world, "Hey, look, whatever this woman need, I'm gonna take care of it. I got it. This is my woman. Once you post her like that, that's just the power of social media and kind of what it means to us now. So I think the the for him to have the audacity to do that, not just deal with other women, but have the audacity to post. I do I do think that's high levels of disrespect. And the thing oh, is, no, no, it's, it's, it, I did. but then he may not see it that way because his conversation with Lynn or the perception of the conversation with Lynn may be different than what Lynn's perception. Oh, my is. God. Mm. Lynn says she contacted the other woman. Lynn, you off. You toxic, Lynn. Oh, my you toxic. goodness. Lynn okay. off the chain. What what she say, Lynn? Oh, my. Lynn, you off the chain. Lynn, Lynn. Lynn, Lynn want to know. I ain't got no problem with that. Okay, I already know. I already man, know. what's she say? No, oh my God. What's you, what you mean you got no problem with that? Hey, shout out no to Jack Star. Hey, Ken, 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 want, Ken, Ken, want, Ken want that smoke. <laughs> like, I just, my, wife, my wife be like, you know this. Oh, what happened? Yeah, right, right, right. No, no, we, and we working on that. We working on that right now, figuring out if it's the phone, if it's the call in that we're going to bring over the speaker and, and have the audience here, or if it's going to be the, the virtual. The only thing about the bringing them in like with us, they have to be prepared to have a conversation. She said, so. I, I just told her the truth. She did not respond, man. Jack Star said, thanks for the support, y'all, tonight. I really needed the tears are running down my face. Wow. Listen, wow. anytime, Jack Star, make sure, listen, y'all, this is every Monday and Wednesday night. Again, for anybody that needs that, info at hardlyinitiated.com. Make sure y'all spell hardly initiated wrong. Yeah. It's not the easiest thing to spell. 
I, it's just not the easiest word. Get a setup for, for that, Lano. But be, listen, I don't want y'all to forget the purpose of this. The purpose of this is to get healing. And you got the master right here. Yes. The coach right in front of you yes. giving you free game. Mm-hmm. But just imagine the value that you're going to get when you start to invest, not in the program, but in yourself via the program. So I'm going to go ahead and drop that link real quick. It's also in the description. That's Ken Canyon's un. Faithful and unfaithful to unstuck, yes. which is our three-day challenge, which is going to go crazy. So make sure y'all cop tickets to that right now. And I want, listen, I want my Harlan, I want y'all in VIP, all right? I want y'all in there VIP, talking to Ken personally. So this dialogue that we having, we're going to be doing that too. Y'all going to be getting that done in the VIP, man. So I'm, I'm, I'm very excited for you guys. Ken, first of all, thank you for going on here and kicking it with us on a late night special all the way my to pleasure. 11. What is it? It's about to be 11 30 tonight. It's the you know longest live we've ever had. And we only got did. one damn guess. Ken, this you, man, Ken, is a monster. You are a beast, bro. I, my, I appreciate y'all, man. You guys keep doing the, keep doing the work you're doing. Yeah. Listen, yo, y'all putting the hard topics out there. You see people staying on. How many people we got on now? Did this late? It's still 500 folks. Yo, first on. off, we still getting a super chat in. Shout out to Larry Love Jr. 82. Larry it's a Love. Brother. I, it's a brother. I know I've seen Larry Love. We got to help Larry, his brother here. Larry, you see all these women upset that not enough men is in the membership and in the chat larry join the freaking membership because i've seen you bro. supporters before come on so now. shout out to larry he says i have trust problems with women because i get a lot of women in relationships approaching me me too wow me too I don't, I don't get a lot of women in relationships approaching me like really no nah. now usually in relationships. they in relationships that they completely unsatisfied with though so they want you to satisfy i ain't say that I'm just saying they're Jake. not happy when I can see that's the only reason that a woman would try to be moving like that. But that does happen where does. women got some things going on. Oh with man, it happens approach. all the time. It happens all the time. Women cheat almost as much as men. And you mean you see you see you something else. <laughs> see, because the going the going saying is women cheat at the same rate, but can't do that almost as much. Right. Now, almost as much as men. We'll do that next time. Why you? Yeah, we're going to do that next time. We're going to do that next time. So, Larry Love, shout out to you, bro. And I know we're going to see you in the next chat. We appreciate you very much. And we're going to have an episode for that because we're going to, Ken about to run out of gas. Let's go ahead and wrap it up, Tyshawn. Yes. I'm going to drop these links in there and check out the link in the description, guys. We're bringing that heat. Every Monday, Wednesday. even after this live is posted, just go to the description in this video and make sure you guys join the challenge. It's a three day challenge at the end of this month. Y'all need to be there, y'all. We need to grow in every area of our lives, especially the most important, which is our family, our relationships, all right? our legacy. All right, now, Ken, yes. thank you again, brother, for My coming pleasure, up here. Man. Came all the way to ATL to Hardly Initiated Studios. To kick it, you are always welcome on the platform here, That's my brother. Fact, bro. That's a fact. Kenny, Kenny straight family to the platform, man. And I'm, I'm excited. I love, it. I love the hardly initiated platform, baby. Yeah. I love it. Even before I got on, I was a fan. I think Ryan reached out to me. That I was me. Him. Yeah, I said I was a fan. We was trying to set it up for a while. I was like, yo, I've been watching y'all. Yeah. I like the way the cameras looked. Yeah, that's why, I, that's why I watched y'all join. Yeah, I like that. I like that. We, 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 we ain't getting better, man. We, yeah, we th- that's why you, the members, y'all gonna keep you keep these cameras sexy. We get we get we get it nice and right. We get people just like Ken on here to continue the transformations happening for you and your families. But listen, I'm gonna let y'all go to sleep tonight. But y'all better make sure y'all join this challenge and the membership. Yeah. Other than that, thank you for tuning in to Hardly Initiated. We. Oh, out. Yeah.